Hello and good afternoon, good evening, and in some locations of the world, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's new episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick with and Friends. And listen, folks, as you can see, I got the old man beard. It's it, you know, I I'm so busy playing Elden Ring, I forgot the shaves. I, I'm forgetting chores to do in the house. It's not good. I'm closing in on 50 hours. I'm level 72, and this is game of the year 2022 for me already. Uh, I, I, Mr. Kayasante is still shaking his head as to how believable. How did this happen to Mr. Boom, who is not a Souls player who gets frustrated? But I am going to tell you something, folks. If you give it time, the elation of beating a boss is real. Like it really, there is something to be said. Um, uh, we have everyone saga just rolling through, folks. Listen, we have an incredible show for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about to open up the show. Uh, uh, GT Seven, of course, Gran Turismo Seven launched Friday of this of last week, um, and uh, it, it launched with a lot of controversy. Obviously, Survivor never got their review code because, well, they gave um, Horizon Forbidden West a six point five. So that was the controversy there. There was not a free upgrade from PlayStation 4 to 5. That's a little bit of a controversy. But that controversy did not uh, did not stop, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we, thanks to uh, Video Game Chronicles or VGC, friends of the program, friends of this entire community, well, they dropped a story early Friday morning that we kind of touched on with uh, Breakfast Brick with Boom. And my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, the microtransactions that are currently going on are nothing short of egregious. I am going to say this to open up the show. Um, I, I normally will be the first one to call out the gaming media who stay silent in these times. But listen, I'm here to tell you that I have actual sites at least a dozen of them that called Sony out for this. And it, it actually included IGN. Super surprisingly. So, of course, I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, there were a lot of the sites that called this egregious, that said it was wrong. It was uh, it was money hatting uh, the community once again. And we're going to break down exactly what those prices are, folks. When we get into the nitty gritty of it, it's disgusting. Um, and uh, well, you know what? It's it's I, I don't know what to say other than don't buy the game. Tell you know if you want to if you want change, don't buy microtransactions. Um, and we're going to get into that. And of course, the second half of the show, uh, we're going to be talking some Elden Ring. The numbers are bonkers. They are ridiculous. Uh, but we'll get into that. But let's get into the introductions. And we have a guest here who's joining us right now. He actually was in the chat. He wanted to talk about what's going on with GT7. And I'm happy to oblige. Welcome, Crispy Bomb. What's up, dude? Oh, what's up, man? And uh, thank you. Thank you for not letting this go. Because I'll tell you something right now. I haven't seen this type of mentality from Sony in years. And, and you know what? You want to go games as a service? That's cool. But man, you are... You're going games as a service and slapping the consumer in the face, and I don't like that. So let's get into it, and uh, thank you for the invite, brother. Oh, no problem, brother. Everborn, I muted you while the dogs are barking. I will unmute you moments, momentarily, brother. Uh, but let's let's uh, work. welcome in the Wandering Dutch. Dutch, listen, there is, um, you know, why I wanted to cover this, uh, why I found it was incredibly important to cover it is because if you folks, if you find folks, remember, we have already 100 people here in the chat, so I want to thank you so much for that. Um, when um, Forza Motorsport 7 released, um, it had points literally taking off of it because it had microtransactions. Guess what, folks? It actually didn't. It had uh, uh, boxes that you can you can win in game, but you couldn't actually spend real world money. Remember that, folks? I remember that. Yep. I remember they actually <laughs> took off points for microtransactions that the game didn't have. So I want to talk about a game that actually has egregious microtransactions. And what's interesting, Dutch, mm -hmm. is that these this information was withheld from the reviewing community. And I think that this is a lot of smoke and mirrors. This is a lot, this is a lot of who's on first, what's on second 
kind of situation, and we have to talk about it. Now, granted, it's probably going to ruffle some feathers. Uh, I don't expect to get any free copies for review games for Sony after what I'm going to have to say about SIE and PlayStation. <laughs> um, and But you know what? That's perfectly fine because, you know what? If Microsoft did this, I would be calling them out just the same. Dutch, how the hell are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I've been playing the game, so I've got a lot of a lot of um, kind of credits per hour type of stuff to run through as well when we're talking Excellent. about this. But um, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to getting into it because again, there's been a lot of a lot of defending for the situation. Uh, again, on like Crispy's been saying, um, that there's no need to defend. It is exactly what it is. You call it out. You just need to call it out, and we'll go into it. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I can't wait to hear from you. Hey, K. Asante, uh, we, we you know we, we haven't heard from you, brother. We we are very interested to get your opinion on us. I know that your Saturday show was a fire episode. You had a couple of guests on. I was in the chat mm -hmm. for a bit. Welcome back to the program, dude. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Saturday's episode was really fun. We had uh, Ty talks on there. You know, you, uh, folks who who are avid viewers of this show will remember him. Yep. We had very very interesting conversation. You know, uh, Eldon and a few other things. Uh, we didn't quite get to touch on GT Seven as much as I would have liked. So this is a great great opportunity to do so. I, I'm you know I'm happy to be here. This is the best best uh, usually the best couple of hours of my day on Monday. So I'm I'm, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get everyone's opinion on this. And um, next up, Dr. Pony. Um, yes, sir. I did, I did not know you were going to make it. I heard that you were going to snub <laughs> some uh, Xbox out there. <laughs> you were going to, you know, use disbar your... that man. Your, your, your disp <laughs> oh, we, yeah, we were, hoping, we were hoping not to get disbarred. Listen, if anyone knows what we're talking <clears> about, <throat> um, a so-called medical professional, which I'm not even sure what country it was, to be honest with you, because if it was in the United States, he's facing potential 10 years worth of jail time for uh, for breaking at least half a dozen hip acts. Uh, he took it upon himself to uh, sh show and actually record inducing someone for surgery in uh, and, and put it online. And he actually used, <laughs> folks, he actually used the council war as why he was doing it. It, it. The most preposterous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. We're not going to give him any credit. We're not giving the guy's name out there, but I'm sure he was reported because, my God, it was the most ridiculous thing. Look how close I was to beating this MF. That's, <laughs> that is why you go back, because you were like, I almost had you. So you're going to see. I, I get him coming up. But, uh, Mag, what's going on? Yes, another sir. Great skit, another fantastic skit. How are you feeling? Thank you so much. Yes, well, paging Dr. Pony, and I showed up. Here we are in the operating room of Primetime Gaming, guys. Uh, guys, the chat's already uh, lit up, so let's get this thing going. We got a great panel. We got some big things to talk about, some spicy things to talk about. Never mind, you know, uh, console war doctors. We got other things that are going to be uh, ruffling a whole lot of feathers, like Boom was saying. And of course, we're all going to have a really good time watching the Elden Ring footage, which because it's so frustrating watching it. Like, oh man, that game! It, you love it and you hate it at the same time. You know what I mean? It's just, but you can't. It's like an abusive relationship. You just keep going back to it. So, anyways, guys, and, and Asante, stop shaking your head. By the way, all right, you're gonna hurt your neck. <laughs> he does. He does. He's, he's still having a hard time fathoming. Uh, he's gonna hurt his neck. We we're getting old, Asante. Especially me. Can't Especially keep doing this. You're gonna you're gonna hurt your neck. All of a sudden, you have to go to chiropractor. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we got a great we got great great topics. Let's get right into the show tonight. And last, and no way least, Everborn Saga, who's been really grinding away at Elden Ring as well. I believe you said you were level fifty two. If I'm not 50, mistaken, fifty four. I think as of this Ooh, morning. Excellent. Not bad. Excellent. Excellent. How and I haven't you, fought the first boss yet. I'm I, 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 I'm, I, I am I am uh, <laughs> using uh, farming exploits and fighting battles only. I know that I can, only fighting battles. I know I can win. I my whole Elden Ring experience now is um, being able to one shot the tree sentinel because he created you know a supervillain. Yes. And now I'm just trying to level up until I can go back and get my just revenge. Him and that guy when you first. Enter the one where you're supposed to die at with all the eight legs. Yeah. First start. I want to kill them and then I will start <laughs> the game. They embarrassed me in front of my fiance. Uh, because I walked out. I'm like, look at this new game. This is what everybody's talking about. And then I I see this tree sentinel. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. I don't know if he sees me. And then he just slaps me with the shield and then hits me with the hammer while I'm still in the get up animation. 
And my fiance is like, you suck at this. Wow. And I'm like, oh, okay. I got something for you. So <laughs> 54, but I don't think I'm ready yet. I think I, I think I want to go to 75 and I want to embarrass him. But well, yeah. I just got back from the doctor's office where I had to pretend that I was playing Elden Ring on the PS5 because you never know these days. <laughs> oh, um God. <laughs> but uh, for a game that I'm so frustrated with uh, that doesn't even have a quest log, and could someone tell me how co-op works in this thing? I cannot oh, stop God. playing. I, I can't figure it out either, actually. You we have should fingers, talk about don't it behind you? the scenes. Well, <laughs> here's something that's interesting. Um, I'm not a Souls guy, like I think I've admitted. Uh, hi, Craig here, not a Souls guy. Um, and <laughs> one one thing I learned by reading you know, numerous threads is that uh, souls people are supposed to know that when you hold the sword with two hands, mm -hmm. it's you 50% more damage. Yeah, I've been using yeah, I've been doing the two handed so thing. Yeah, I okay, so I'm level 72, right? I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I 15 uh demigods so down, three main bosses down, two main bosses, one higher boss guy was so big, all you saw was legs on the screen. Um, and I just learned that when you hold Y and you press the cor corresponding button left or, or right bumper, mm -hmm. you hold it with two hands. So I've been whacking away at these things with one with one sword and one hand. The, the game doesn't hold your hands, folks. Uh, 50 hours in, I just figured that out. So uh, The yeah. game doesn't hold your hands, but it also doesn't need to cut your hands off. It may, right? might, well, might as well, yeah. Like, can somebody – I have – I finally got <laughs> magic. I don't even know how to use it. And Either do I. Like, I don't even know how to equip like, it. Oh, you're, you're, you, you, th that's another thing where like using the pouch, but they're like, oh, you assign the magic to your left hand, but your sword's in your right hand. So, so how would you be able quick, to, how am I supposed to know these I things? Know, I know we'll get deep into the Elden Ring conversation, but when we do talk about the, the, this conversation, can, can we also bring up the fact that some some developers have ha have actually like you know oh we're out. gonna you know oh, what yeah. listen oh, what, what, <laughs> what, you know, that's oh, yeah. first all right, of all seventy two right now right. he's above like half of you guys so I'm uh -huh. just saying like that that makes me think you know like maybe maybe I should just buy it at full price like screw it. You know, well, I'm going to say what, this. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it around because we're so heavily into the Elden Ring conversation, and uh, and you and uh, and Kaysan, they brought up a great point. Let's let's bring up that. Let's start with the Elden Ring, folks. Uh, sorry if you came here for GT. You're going to get it on the back end, second half of the show. Pause. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Pause. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, hey. So so here's the thing. Um, what we're starting to hear, uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago during a, 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 an investor's call at EA, uh, someone there blamed Halo for the failure of Battlefield 2042. Ins instead of EA saying we're the blame, DICE is the blame, our engine sucks, we, we should have delayed it, we didn't, they blamed Halo for being a more superior product, and in fact it is. Well, we are now starting to hear on the socials, on the Twitter spears, that there are certain developers um, at Sony uh, that are now blaming Elden Ring for the 80 percent drop off in sales of horizon forbidden west meaning that it has taken a complete nosedive and no one is talking about the game uh listen i'm not talking about the game because i have eight hours in and i put it down because the bugs were egregious uh i am not playing this bu buggy game i'm not jumping to my death for the you know 10th or 11th time i will get to it when they i know there's some people in this panel that are playing it and quite enjoying it, probably close to the end. And no case, aren't they? Is one of them. Um, but for me, I'm not coming back until it's patched. So now I'm playing Elden Ring, and Elden Ring, by, by, all, by all accounts, may not look as good as Horizon Forbidden West, uh, but it's a more, much more superior product in every way. And uh, now we're starting to hear a trio of Ubisoft and PlayStation Studio developers are catching a lot of flack. flack publicly criticizing Elden Ring's performance, user experience, and quest design. And the first, I guess the one that's probably the most, uh, um, the one that stands out the most, is Horizon Forbidden West's senior quest designer, Blake, and I think it's Rabouch, uh, whose profile is now locked. 
It's pronounced Joins rubbish. The, 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 oh, 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 I couldn't help myself. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I mean, <laughs> it, it could be r- 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 rubbish, but it, uh, uh, r- 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 uh, I'll say it's rubbish. Uh-huh. He's obviously been in, uh, in you know, uh, in, you know, in the socials criticizing, and I, I actually have the three comments um, now. Ahmed uh, Salama, he is from That's Ubisoft. That's the funniest one for me. This this first guy. Uh, yeah, he if, says if the you fact have a look that at what he works on. Well, look, this is what he's. This is this is. I'm reading verbatim, folks. This is directly from Twitter. I'm not making. I'm not, you know, subcategorizing. This is this is what they said. Uh, his name is uh, Ahmed Salama. He works at Ubisoft, and he says the fact that Elden Ring scored a 97 Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming poop about game UX. My life is a lie. And then Rebecca Fernandez O'Shea, she works at Nix, who is now, of course, owned by SIE or PlayStation. And she says, nor PC graphics, stability, and performance, apparently. And Horizon Forbidden Blake, as he's known as Big uh, Big Rebo on Twitter, says, nor Quest Design, really. So these three designers decided that it was cool to... Uh, shout out and go up against other designers, which is I kind of think is a bit of a no no. I mean, you know, it's it's I understand. Look, I'm not going to say that it's acceptable, but when you know, uh, Pony, um, you know, 321 and Xbox 997 <laughs> go out and they say these horrible things like they make death threats, which is of course illegal and don't do that, and just you know, completely go out of their way to be a holes, which we see a lot on social media. You don't give it a pass, but you're like, yeah, I can see where it's coming from because these are knuckleheads. But when you hear actual developers that are part of the development community that has really been, you know, ostracized in recent years for delaying games and bre- and, and releasing broken games, I, I was a little taken aback that they would go so hard against Elden Ring that is doing so well. And I don't know if it's jealousy. I don't know what it is. But I, I, I want to start first with Kay Asante on this because you brought it up. And we transitioned from, you know, just getting to open the show to, you know, talking about Elden Ring to this. Is this a bit of a no-no for you? Like, are you su- as surprised as I am? So I suspect I will be, I will have a, a minority opinion here, I suspect. Okay. So uh, I'm of two minds. And let me, let, me be, let me be very clear of the two minds that I am, right? first part which exactly what you said i think it is inappropriate for you to put your dirty laundry out there in the open for all to see especially in the developer community which is a small community right uh and they tend to uplift each other and respect each other putting your dirty laundry out there like that is very much a bad thing to do just like the guy who the the ori guy right same exact conversation that he had that they are having and the reason why i am excuse me the reason why I'm equating the two is because of the same reason that like the, when the Ori developer said what he said about Xbox, making sure the game should go everywhere. He was being self-serving, right? These folks here are also being self-serving specifically because the UX guy, the, the quest line guy, you know, all the things that Elden Ring lacks is what these guys are here to- saying. So you guys are saying none of these matter. They're being self-serving because if that is the truth and, and the sales of Elden Ring uh, being being an uh, example, right, they're going to start losing their jobs because they're going to be the people. They're afraid that the money makers will go, oh, we don't need to pay you guys as much as we do. Look what Elden Ring did. He, they, 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 they put scraps of story in there and, and everybody so bought it. We don't need this guy writing all this narrative. Get out of here. Right. Same thing with UX. Same, That is their fear. That's where they're coming from with it. Yeah. Right. But to be fair, I kind of agree with some of the stuff they're saying. And the reason why I agree is because in a world where these are money making entities, the more of what you give them, if you give them that right and and, and, and them being the consumer and that consumer eats it up, what do you think is going to happen? More of the same because they assume you'll eat it up. The fear is that, hey, now, as long as the gameplay is tight and the moment to moment is, is absolutely uh, stupendous as it clearly is here, then everything else can take a back seat. Right. I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm not saying the way that they were expounding their virtues were, was, was laudable. I don't think that was a good idea for them to do. 
but the sentiment and the fear i agree with because i hey. like my polished games i like my games that tell you see this thing it's a flask what does it do it gives you health oh <laughs> here's a button it's the menu button for maps when you press it the maps show up when you press it again the maps go away what a novel concept all things that don't get done in this game and by the way i'm level 53 I've been playing for like nine hours. Uh, no, not yeah, about about nine to ten hours. Sounds I'm like at the you've very been last level, farming, sir. Oh yeah, many many farming things. Yes, <laughs> at the very very last level of Horizon Forbidden West, which I put eighty eight hours into. Wow. And, yes, and because of various moving construction situations, I will have to go back to that. And I'm not there. I'm not on there right now. But again, I disagree completely with how it was said. I just because it is it is something that needs to be fought be, in the background. It is something that if you're afraid of that as a UX designer, as a quest designer, as you know, then you need to go to your bosses and go to your folks and go, hey, guys, you know, I understand this worked, but this is not the only thing and not the only game in town. Let's, you know, pump the brakes because there can be room for both. That's what you should be advocating for instead of being out there, you know, airing your dirty laundry because the way it's been done has been terrible. Now, the yeah. reason why I say that is because they're not the only ones that have been speaking on it. Like uh, uh, a, a, a very prominent indie developer that I follow that I respect uh, wholeheartedly, uh, Rami Ismail, always the one to go out there to, pu to put himself out there and, and make, you know, strong statements on things. He, he basically said the same thing, but he used better words and put about um, and put it about a little bit better than the three people, uh, specifically the ones that that have uh, what do you call it? Uh, Forbidden West it you know worked on they worked on forbidden west those things make it difficult for you to have such a nuanced conversation because the first thing everybody will go is oh shut your mouth your game didn't sell well or because your game lost out to this other game that's why you're out here saying these things he can be wrong in how he approached it and they can be wrong in their in their just the method of, of communication of this issue but the issue can still be valid in my humble opinion so now y'all yeah. can dash hey, me. Can I? Can I? Can no, I, can no, I it's fair. Your Honor, may I address the court? Please, please, please by all means. Ahead, ahead, okay, so I, I just want to paint a little picture here. I want to say that I understand where these developers are coming from, right? They put all this work into the, the narrative, which didn't really make sense to begin with. And they put all this work into these visual aesthetics, even though they had a lot of bugs. And they did all this work and they did this. This is a repeat, right? This is like this is like uh, PTSD, right? Because in 2017, we've seen this movie before. They but put to be all fair, the Everborn, It wasn't just it wasn't it. just the, the, the Horizon folks that were speaking on this. So you can't just say it's because of the Horizon. I, I understand. I understand. They put all this work into this uh, stuff, and then here comes. 16 frames a second, Breath of the Wild, uh -huh. just eating their lunch. And then again, they're like, look, we got it this time. This is a sequel. We got a name going into this thing. We sold 20 million copies. And here they come with all their UI and all their glitz and glamour. And this game that you got to you gotta literally cut your physical finger off to do co-op. Mm -hmm. And there's no quest log. <laughs> There's almost no You do have to sacrifice. I mean, it is part of the game. Right? <laughs> right. This is what I'm saying, right? You're like, you have to pour blood into your system, yeah. into your oh, Xbox man. or PlayStation, right? It does say and, that on the back of the box. It, it is. It's, 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 it's in the EULA, right? So this is the thing. They All of that, and then again, here comes a game that doesn't care about any of those fancy FMV slow motion cutscenes, Right? This is just straight gameplay. It's no fluff, no frills. You're going to play this game, and you're going to think you're not going to like it, but you're going to be addicted. And it shows, hey, people, maybe you were focusing on the wrong things. And I'm not, I'm not saying this to come at um, Horizon, because I, I'm joking, but I would actually be pissed off too. And I think this game uh, is so esoteric to the point of we are so immersed in the 30 second gameplay loop that we are forgiving a lot of things that really shouldn't be forgiven and the problem here that we're going to see and this happens every time in this industry because mm -hmm. elden ring is doing so well you're going to see Everything a bunch of copycats that right. miss the point 
and then they don't do these things thinking that's the reason why this works. And that is and, the reason why their point is somewhat valid. That is yeah, what, well, that is, look, I just what, feel bad for them. Like, I imagine know you put all of that work into Horizon and whatever other games they work yeah. on. And here this comes. They're not even trying to. You this know what this is like? This is a slippery slope to broken UI. This is a slippery slope. You know, to, it's a you feature, know, you know, not a bug. You know what this is like? And, and I'll leave you with this analogy because mm. I try to give you guys an analogy every week. You, oh you're a guy, you go to the gym every day, oh you got your veneers, <laughs> you, you fixed your face, you got your Botox, you, you, you got this nice <sighs> job, you, you, you went and you bought a Benz, you know what I'm saying? You're thinking, I'm going to be the perfect guy out here, I'm going to get all these girls, and what happens? The girl goes and leaves the nightclub with the busboy, because all of that work uh, you did doesn't really matter, because you got no game. Well, oh. it's, it's that or the bus boy has one down to the floor. Boys. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. Third leg status. Okay, I get you. So, I you know, I he, has, he has tattooed on his hand where he grabs her long dong silver. So, okay. You know, I mean, if that's the, the case. Tripod. Yes. Uh, in case anybody was wondering, gonna... I used to be a busboy. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, uh, I was going to hear, man. If the bus was going to openly bro. criticize a game, in, in the mm -hmm. public forum, they need to ensure that their own work is sound first. Mm -hmm. The first person to criticize was from Ubisoft. Uh, that person also worked on Battlefield 2042. Correct. <laughs> that, that's uh, rich. And was yeah. a UX designer on Battlefield 2042. Now, we notoriously know how that game went. Yeah. Um, well. And just how badly that game ended up. So to openly criticize another game for something that his game did to a, a, a much worse degree. Um, yeah, you've got to make sure your own house is in order before you start criticizing others. Well, you know, um, the old saying is don't throw stones in a glass house, right? Exactly. I mean, it's a perfect example. Exactly. It, so I, found, and, and, I found that very hypocritical. On yeah. the horizon front, it's a different story. They have bugs. They have a lot of quests that they put a lot of time into. They've got quest logs. Which is something that a lot of people would love in Elden Ring. <laughs> I would. I would. <laughs> but that said, again, the gameplay loop and gameplay is king. And the gameplay loop in Elden Ring has obviously shown its 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 true form and everybody's addicted to it and addicted yep. to the, the grind in which case. But I think more people pick up on it because they've got more room to maneuver and more room to battle, etc. But that set aside, it's you've got to... Like, maintain your own sense of self-dignity first and foremost. You don't go out into the public forum and start trashing other people's work. Imagine if we went out into the public forum and started just slandering everybody else's podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like None of us are by any means perfect in our podcast styles. Sometimes we do things right, sometimes we do things wrong, sometimes we mess up a little bit. It happens. But we, we don't have then the like the say so to go out and just slander everybody else's podcasts in the public yeah, forum. It, it, it's, it's, I, I put it to this way: uh, if 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 anybody were to go out and say podcast X is no good because they actually have legitimate uh, gripes, like I I just didn't like the gameplay, or I don't like the way the gameplay is presented, or I don't like the way the boxes are for the people. You, t I, I've taken a lot of cris criticism from the uh, from the people. Never my own peers, uh, only from the the community. Of the K okay, boom, I would like this. And yeah. obviously, you see, you know, t I mean, right now we only we, we're, with the program I'm using, we can use 1080p. Hopefully, they're going to bring that up to 4K in in a future update this year. And of course, I will then have 4K footage because uh, I don't use o o OBS. Uh, I was going to say, or you could go to OBS, baby. Yeah, no thanks. No, I tried no, it no. Before. Nah. It's just not for me. But what I want to do is I, I want to bring it back to Wandering Dutch, but I got to bring up the numbers. Uh, K. Asante said sales. He talked about numbers. Well, oh, the yes. numbers, folks, are not only ridiculous, they would some would deem fake. And I have the actual documentation that says otherwise. According to uh, Steam Spy, which is uh, uh, an app that's used to track how many uh, people are bought and are playing a game concurrent. Well, it has been confirmed by numerous websites that Elden Ring on Steam alone has sold 10 million copies in under a week. Jesus. That is 10 million copies on Steam. That is not counting Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, or PlayStation 5. 
and we do have it on two really good accounts that uh, PlayStation 4 and 5 led on physical sales in the UK. They yeah. were up uh, uh, up on, uh, on on Xbox by significant numbers. And then we, ter- then we heard when everything was put out there that uh, uh, 85% of customers uh, bought digitally the uh, digital editions on Xbox as opposed to, I think it was like 39% on PlayStation. Uh, yeah. So it's the numbers are ridiculous. We do not have the sales numbers for Xbox or PlayStation, but it's safe to assume that if they sold 10 million on Steam, we can just say let's let's just be let's be fair and say half mm-hmm. of that uh, on both of those two consoles, which are pretty big. Uh, so 15 plus million copies in a week makes it one of the biggest releases. It's as a matter of fact, it's the sixth biggest uh, release in Steam history sixth biggest in steam it's doing cod numbers it's 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 doing cod numbers and fifa numbers as these numbers as these numbers come out and they are prevalent right doesn't doesn't that lend a little bit to the the public outburst notwithstanding and what and and the dutch is 100 percent right in assertions whether it be for, for for the dude who thought his ux was good for for battlefield shut your mouth (laughs) <laughs> or the people who thought that their 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 uh, uh, Forbidden West was a, should have been regarded as a better game, whether it is or not, is not the, is not it's not for you to air in public opinion. Shut your mouth, right? But still, these numbers mean you know you're gonna start seeing a lot of bad UX games out there, man. Uh, you know, and that's the problem here. Am I so wrong? What, another thing, you know, before you we you chastise them, just, just too me. much, right? I was just, gonna say. Go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, just because a game comes out like this, is sometimes you can't mimic the same thing anyway. Correct. Because a lot of people try to do a Souls game and try to do Souls things like that. A lot of Souls games out there these days. Never <laughs> Mortal kind of Shell is terrible. But yeah. they're all bad. True, but generally. it's out there. You know? Right, Mortal so... Shell is not, is not the same, but they definitely saw any of these Souls games and went, you know what? That's what we'll make as well. Mortal Shell. <laughs> right? Right. And, and, Mortal and Shell was not good. That's, not that's good. the fear. That's the yeah. fear of these UX designers that they all now take a back seat because the top selling game of one of the top selling games of all time didn't emphasize their their craft as it should have in their but opinion. At the same time, though, it would be a foolish it would be a foolish person to assume that just because one person can get away with not doing great UX would mean that your game would work without great UX. <laughs> so, all right, in in, in a world of UX designers, right? I'm not talking about the whole game, but if you are a UX designer, right? Now, imagine that, imagine UX as being a rapper. And then imagine Nas putting all of this work into his records and his lyrics and all of these things and his story career. And then he sees Kodak Black put out an album that sells more than hits. You don't think Nas is going to feel some kind of way and feel like he should say these new rap these new rappers are trash? Probably yeah. just for the culture of mm. of rapping or in this case UX design. Well, but see, well, kind I, of, I see... but like Eminem did exactly the same thing and dissed mumble rappers all over his tracks and ended up selling more via dissing them on his tracks. Rap's mm. a bit of a different one. <laughs> That's exactly my point. I was just about to say, although I see your analogy because gaming or game creation is so many different disciplines coming together in fusion and rap is just one solitary individual's undying skill and but talent not anymore it's all about a- 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 eminem is a different breed dutch i'm, I'm just you know. saying oh yeah dude yeah he is He's yes, but they brain. also thrive, like rappers in general thrive off dissing each other in public via sure, rap songs. Exactly, and exactly. then they can sell that and profit off it anyway. So it's a bit of a different ball game. M- Eminem's like Halo Infinite. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden, like, you know, Halo after how many games? You know what I'm saying? It, it comes out and then it, it, it enamors and then, you know, EA's blaming them for, you know, Battlefield 2042. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, th- this is... This is from Soft saying, okay, we get it. Like, and, and and boom, you can come back to me. But I'm telling you, like, what I see from the outside looking in is very interesting. And and not a lot of people can give this perspective because I, I'm a gamer. I'm not a console warrior. 
Right. And and I see the console wars being smashed by this game so easily. You know what I mean? Like you got games being delayed. I think because of this game. That's my opinion. I I, I would. I, would I don't think you can play Forspoken after after Elden Ring comes out. Like I have a I have a, a story. You won't. Yeah, I have a suspicion <laughs> that the October date is not going to get hit either. I think that's going to get delayed. Just like God of War is not going to make it this year as well because it's just not. I'm just. I don't think it is, and I'm gonna tell you yeah, why. Um, if if you look at what's going on right now in social media, and in just just the the the, the gamers speak every day since Elden Ring has been released, it's all and anything that people are talking about. And like I said, I can guarantee you that. The de developers at Guerrilla Games, who are incredibly talented, are literally going to sleep and twitching because this is a, 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 a an absolute one to one of what happened with Breath of the Wild in 2017, and now it's happened once again in 2022, where their game that they put all this work into, no one is playing, no one is talking about, and and, and to be fair. Um, Horizon uh, Forbidden West um, is much buggier than um, th than the first Horizon by by leaps and bounds. Uh, I, I can't. I honestly cannot. It, it, it's so buggy, especially on the climbing, that I I, I had to stop playing because it was just it, it annoyed me in such a way that I was like, yeah, this this is this is not for me. I'll, I'll come back to it. So. I mean, it's it. It is what it is. Uh, but but uh, you on know. that note, boom as well. I'm I'm playing Horizon on the PS4 Pro. Of course, like I say, I, I gave up my PS5 at launch to, because obviously I had too many consoles incoming anyway that month. Um, but I've I've also opted to wait until I get a PlayStation 5 for it. Unfortunately, the performance on PS4 Pro um, isn't as great when it starts getting into the open wide sections. Uh, you, the, the frame drops do become no, more noticeable. The pop in uh, and the LOD pop in becomes far more noticeable. Um, it, it overall, it's pushing that console to its absolute breaking point, uh, and it's it's taken away from the enjoyment of the game. So I'm I'm now at a point where I've stopped playing Horizon, and I'm mm -hmm. going to wait until I, it's in a better position. Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree. I like I said, my brother Neo Mental is also going through the same thing. He's he's dealing with the uh, with the grabbing uh, the hit boxes, not or, or the grab boxes when you're climbing being just terrible. Um, yeah. And he also said the same thing. He says he's been getting a few times he had to uh, 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 show up the console to reload back in because it froze. Uh, music would stop playing. Uh, he said that there was a huge amount of pop in that he was seeing, especially on the horizon. No, no pun intended. So him, like me, and you, and several others are going to come back to it. I, I I'm, I'm always, I, I don't mind because I, I love Aloy. I, I, I love what they've done over Gorilla, and I can't wait to see where they take her further. And I can't wait to get back into the story, but I'm not going back until it's fixed because it's just, it's ruining my experience. But Mag, let, let's get hey, your opinion uh, on this. Boom, yes, just sir. One thing, one point I want to add, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, part of the reason for the sales discrepancy uh, between horizon and Elden ring is um, horizon is only in one place. Right. I mean, if you count PS4 and PS5, but like Elden rings everywhere. That's right. No, and that, that, true. that is part of it. So we should mention that. Yeah, but that, you know that something that's thinking. pretty interesting. Even though you you are you are making some great point, if if anything should teach Sony a lesson, it's what Elden Ring did on PC. Because if it was day and date releases on PC, they might have just they might have sold five million copies of Horizon, but they didn't because they want to keep it to that one two box skew. And I think that it's 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 a mistake. Now, is that going to change? Is Jim Ryan going to change potentially? He's potentially going to make some. He big needs change. that yacht. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, a Jamaican Jim needs the rod, according to uh, according to King David, uh, who is actually going to be sitting down with me one on one on the seventeenth of March, folks. That's right. Uh, we're talking about Miles Dompierre confirmed for this Thursday as well. We have some incredible topics we're going to get into, um, and I have some big, big, big guests lined up. I can't wait to get some confirmation so I can throw that out there to the uh, to the you know to the wild. But listen. 
Mag, before I get to you, brother, I got to catch up with some of the Super Chats. We have yeah. quite a few of them. We have Drawn TJ, generous friend of the show. He starts us off tonight with a $5 Super Chat and says, Sony has gone too far, and this is why I won't buy a PlayStation 5 this year. I'll wait till it's cheap. And nothing wrong with that. We have Vanessa Rhea, I think it's called. I, well, it's Vanessa with uh, I-R-A. I don't know how to pronounce that. She drops, wow, a very generous $20 Super Chat. Well, thank you so much for, for, for the generosity. But more importantly, thank you for being here. And she says, GT7 prices feel almost old, like Star Citizen-like. Uh, Sony testing the market with this. Love Forza or Forza, as she as she as she corrects me. Forza Motorsport, pronounced Forza Boom, <laughs> at least did season passes to get groups of cars. Worry others in the genre will follow. Yeah, hopefully. Listen, the only way Sony's going to realize that this is wrong and it's broken is if we go out and we actually say something. Like I told you from the beginning, I wasn't buying Gran Turismo Seven. Uh, it to me, it is an inferior racer when you look at what's right over the other side of the grass, and that is Forza Horizon 5 and Forza Motorsport. Uh, even though seven is uh five years old, I think it still looks better. Um, I, I don't know if it plays better because I can't say I haven't played Gran Turismo 7. Um, but we also have B uh Brett Bingham, generous friend of the show, he drops a fun hour zoom chat and says, X blaming from devs. Uh, 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 blaming uh, uh, George R. R. Martin. Uh, I mean, listen, it's it's. I, I don't know what to say other than d d developers need to be better. Uh, they need to be better than the community uh, because they are power professionals or supposed supposed to be anyway. And I think it is incredibly in bad taste that you're going to go to a public forum like Twitter that is notorious for being toxic especially in the console war and throwing fellow developers under the bus. I did not like it then. I don't like it now. And I'm glad we're having a conversation about it by all means, Mag. Let's, um, yes, let's talk about it. Uh, for you, this is, I mean, we're, we're, everyone on the panel here is professionals in one uh -huh. field or another. And, you know, I, I, you know, there's a certain way to do things when you have uh, a criticism, a critique of your uh -huh. fellow person in fellow, whatever uh the way that these three devs did it was wrong it was in bad taste uh it showed that they are adolescent mind thinkers and uh, what what are your thoughts on this well you know to quote jesus christ <laughs> he who is without sin may cast the first stone <laughs> And wow. boy does that ever ring true 2022 years later doesn't it and uh, these guys have obviously are doing the exact same thing. And, uh, you know, just when it comes to a business, like, for example, I like I, I liken the dev business the, uh, the, to the similar to the restaurant business. It's large, yet also very small. And, you know, there are thousands of restaurants, hundreds of thousands of restaurants. But if you screw over one, guess what? If you go to another restaurant to go get a job 26 towns uh, over, they're going to know about it because everybody talks, right? And that's the, the same thing with the dev community. These guys are the same thing. Devs all over the world or whatever, right? But if someone does something, good or bad, they all hear about it because, again, it's a small community in a very large sort of world, right? So, you know, that's what I see there. It's, it's completely unprofessional. It's ridiculous to even do that. Not on Twitter. If you want to do it over a couple of beers or something, Okay, go ahead and bitch all you want. Who doesn't go out and bitch about work to their friends or their whatever, their coworkers or whatever? You do that. That that's happens. Oh, did you see what Lucy did today? Oh my god. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff that happens. Okay, but the thing is, you don't do it on a public forum. Okay? Because now you are slandering people that are in the exact same business that you are in, and that doesn't that doesn't look good. It doesn't bode well and it doesn't look good. And like I said, you know, you, uh, well, actually Dutch said, it, excuse me. Uh, you know, talking about how one of the guys worked on Battlefield 2042. You should hide for about a year before you even say anything about that. I you agree. know what I mean? Before you even open your mouth. Right. But the thing is that anyway, whatever. That's the way it goes. You want to be adolescent about it. You want to be ridiculous. That's fine. Go right ahead. By the way, speaking of Dutch, I do take offense to what you said earlier uh, about uh, people not being absolutely perfect on podcasts. Um <laughs> You know, I, I, I took great offense to that. Uh, anyways, in all seriousness, here's the thing. Elden Ring. 
you know, when a lot of people are saying, oh, it's FOMO, it's FOMO, that's why, it's FOMO. Everybody's just talking about it. it's FOMO. That's why there's 10 million on Steam and then God knows what they're selling on the consoles and everything else. Let's let's say probably about at least five, right? So you're talking about probably maybe 15 million, which I believe is their, would be their best selling of all time was Dark Souls 3 at what? I think it was between 12 and 15 million copies, something like that. It was up there. And, I can get the number. Yeah, I think it was between 12 and 15 for Dark Souls 3, which are their best selling of all time. Now, the thing is, that every, now all of a sudden they do that in like a day? Or less, <laughs> not a day, excuse me, in less than a week. Here's the thing. What a lot of people don't get, they're like, oh, it's just FOMO, this and that. People are jumping all over this game. It's not even, even going to be that good. It's just another Souls game, blah, blah, blah. You know, when you think about a musician, when you think about whether it's a rap star or a rock star or a band or anything, by the time you heard about it, or by the time the masses heard about it, they're on album number four. They've been touring bars and clubs for 17 years before they cracked the big market, right? Before they made it, before they did the, as they like to say, the crossover, right? And then all of a sudden, now you, now, you know, now you made it big, okay? And you blew up. Sometimes it takes 17 years. Sometimes it takes 20 years. Sometimes it takes 25 years. Sometimes it never happens at all. Okay, the point is, is that from software, everybody knew about them. But now all of a sudden, maybe that this genre of game has now come into, you know, the collective consciousness of the general public. And now it's maybe the cool thing to do to see who can actually do it. Yeah, okay, before it was a niche thing between two and 10 million people were like, we're the get good crowd. Well, now the main audience is looking at it going, I want to be part of the get good crowd. <laughs> and then even if you suck, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, well, I suck at it. But you know, the thing. and obviously that's the case because that's the case now, because now what's happening, they have now matched their top sales in one week that they've done over the lifetime of their best selling game. You know, it's the same thing with, like, you know, I, when I was young, much younger, of course, you guys remember this, uh, when gangster rap came out, remember that? Okay. I was there way before it became popular. I was listening to underground mixtapes from New York City. You know that some guy in this uh, oh, record store awesome. used to get up here, cost me $25 for a mixtape from some place, and uh, that, that the guy said, oh, yeah, I get a crate of these every month from uh, from New York or whatever. I was listening to this stuff then. And, of course, it wasn't even from New York. It was all from New York and L.A. making its way up to Canada. And right. But the thing is, no one was buying that stuff. Even when, even when NWA came out, no one was really buying that stuff right away. Then all of a sudden, one day, it just clicked. And then the general public said, I think extra rap's amazing. And then all of a sudden it became a thing. And then the nineties, you all, we all know what happened in the nineties, right? And then it blew up. And that's the same thing here. Maybe that's what's happened. It's become part of the collective consciousness that these kind of souls games now, now, now actually I think from software has got themselves a big problem because now I think that the spotlight is going to be on them for not only a sequel. Cause they're, you know, they may or may not do a sequel, but they're going to be there's going to be a huge spotlight on them for their next game because now you've got a way bigger audience waiting for that next game whenever it comes four years three years five years whatever right so actually I think that they're in a I think they're in a tough spot because now they're going to be like whoa we're going to have to you know surpass this game right and what we've done with this game or whatever else and that's when things get dangerous you know yeah. because then they try to do too much you know like when you watch like a superhero sequel. You know, you watch the first one, great. And then you watch the second one and they try to they try to shove 18 villains into one movie because they're trying to make it bigger and better than the last one. It's the same thing here. Now they're going to face a problem. Now, in regards to the Horizon Forbidden West situation, you know, I do feel bad for them. Okay, I really do. Because, But you know what the thing is, though, too? I, I You know, I kind of get it. I don't think, okay, go ahead, shoot arrows at me, guys. I think Breath of the Wild sucks ass. Okay. I mean, listen, that's that's watch uh, your goddamn mouth, it sucks. sir. <laughs> it sucks. You know what? If and I beat you with and a stick and it breaks after four, if, if, you know, about uh -huh. breaks after four whacks with a stick, make a better game. You know the thing. Say what you like, will about revolution. whether you like it or you don't, right? Amen. Say what you will whether you like it or you yeah. don't. But the fact that it made so much money makes sure that other games Nintendo. will become Breath of the World like. That's I know. the reason why people hey, have a problem with Elden Ring. And, and Mag, before you continue to add on to your earlier point, uh, yes, and I, I'm, I can say this as a person who is on this journey and makes uh, comics myself. Yes. Um, you know, it can take years of hard work and sleepless nights mm -hmm. to be an overnight success. 
Yeah, that, right? that's exactly and, it. That's exactly and, it. And, and I re- even if we think about like comic book movies, they used to be a joke. Remember Fantastic Four? Yes, I remember. Re- remember some of these things we used? Remember the David Hasselhoff, uh, the Nick Fury, right? How about the Phantom? You know, exactly, like, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So they used to be a joke, but now no people Phantom take slander, them- please. No. I'm just saying now everybody's on board and movies are making two and three billion dollars. Mm-hmm. But at, but you know the hardcore of people who actually read the comics, you know they put they were doing that for years before the general populace got onto yes. it. Now everybody pretends they're a comic book fan. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was saying. Like I said, by the time you hear about a band on the radio and you're like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. They've been out for 17 years. They're yeah. on their fourth album, going on their fifth album, whatever, right? But anyways, this is what I'm going to get into. I understand some of the frustrations. I don't think that on a technical level, technical level, hear me out, that Elden Ring is better than Horizon Forbidden West. And I yes, don't mean I, like, I would agree with that. Like, like if you look the way that the game plays, never mind the bugs, okay? Because I only played one hour of Horizon and I stopped because I want to wait for them to, you know, patch it. You know, patch it because I've heard about some of the bugs. I've heard about some of the issues. I heard about people losing their saves, corrupt saves, whatever. I'm like, I'm not investing what little time I have to game these days uh, to something that I may lose. No. So I put it down. The only reason why I bought it day one is because now I have a game share partner I can actually trust. So therefore, I game share with someone on my PlayStation 5. So now I'm only paying 50%, not 105. But anyway, that's besides the point. I will still bitch about $105, okay? But, you know, now I'm paying 50, all right? But the thing is, you know, you look at, the, look at that situation. You had um, Breath of the Wild come out. What's the big deal about that game? I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, you're like, oh, it's the art style. You know, they did a Prince of Persia that looked just like that 50, uh, 10 years before. You guys remember that? The hand drawn. I, I quite enjoyed that Prince of Persia. God damn, that, that was a yeah, good it was, game. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, and everybody's like, oh, the traversal is, is uh, revolutionary. What? Because he climbed a tree? Have you played an Assassin's <laughs> Creed game for the last 20 years? Have you played a Prince of Persia you, you, game? But they, they, see, the, like, I, I think, what, I think what, what they were talking about was you could literally climb anything. See that that was the difference. You, you can in Assassin's Creed too, pretty much. Yeah, I can't yeah. think of a single piece of wood that I can't climb on, or or a rafter, or a roof, or a whatever, or a boulder. Come on now, Mac. You're gonna make me start defending Nintendo. Please don't make. No, me no, do no. That. God, no. Please, Mag, no, no. I'll, stop, lucky, I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. But the you thing are is, lucky Nintendo. I'm my dinner right now, sir. Nintendo gets <laughs> that pass. I almost choked. But you know what I'm saying? It, it, I mean, I'm just saying it's not. I don't know. It's not that revolutionary to me. I don't think it was that big of a deal. I think that Horizon Forbidden West, uh, sorry, Horizon Zero Dawn, was a bolder move at that time. Oh, 100%. It was, yeah. It was a it, new it, IP, a new story. It was, um, it was a risk. Let's face it. It was a risk. And I think it's a risk that, to me, paid off. And obviously, it paid off for Sony. They ended up selling 20 million copies. Now, all of a sudden, you get Elden Ring. And then, you know, whether it's the slow grind no pun intended of like from soft over the last like several games are now becoming popular and famous and now everybody wants to jump you know, in on you know it. where the saltiness comes Slash into play the FOMO. i don't know yeah, you, you know you know what you know where the saltiness comes into play mm-hmm. is horizon zero dawn which is a for me a masterpiece i, right? I love it just a masterpiece of uh you know remember this is the same team that brought us kill zone and they, for the first time, brought us a new third-person story-driven yeah. game. So it, it open it, it world, was, nonetheless. Yeah, open world. Yeah. But here is where the saltiness from that team comes in. That game over its lifetime has sold uh, twenty million, which is which is fantastic. It's it's fantastic. Twenty million of anything is fantastic. But when you go and you look at say. In one week's time, Elden Ring has sold 15 plus million. Yeah. yeah. Not that fantastic anymore. No, it um, is. And you know, boom, Sony doesn't help with the price tag. Yes. Okay. Like, I mean, I, I know it doesn't seem that much. In the United States, it's only 10 bucks. I get it. The rest of the world, it's up to $30 difference yeah. mm-hmm. between Elden Ring and between Horizon Forbidden West. Okay. Let that sink in for just a second. Okay? Like I said, Canada, it's a $25 difference. In other parts of the world, it's $30 difference between last gen and this gen for Sony games. So Sony is not exactly helping the situation. And Mag, weigh that against uh, the increase in gas prices lately. Oh, my God. When you're watching that, that $10 
in a vacuum might be nothing or thirty dollars, but when you look at what else is going on in the world, wow. it makes it a lot harder to justify. Oh that. yes, I well I talked about this before and I will say it again. Here in New York, if you want a little tub of uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, seven eighty nine. Boom! I just talked to someone who's in Miami today. Okay. And uh, he said uh, where he was, it was $13 for a, uh, a one-pound pack of bacon. $13. That's, uh, and, and, I, and I asked him, I go, did you go, did you go to one of those hippie f- uh, Whole food stores? You know, where they're like, well, the pig was um, read poetry every day, and he was massaged, and, uh, you know, it was a free-range uh, pig, and uh, that's why it's so expensive. No, he's like, it was a regular grocery store. Okay? So, anyways, yeah, you're right, Everborn. That's the same, same idea, okay? And boom, you know? That, that these prices are going up and Sony is not budging and that right. doesn't help either. What I would have loved to have seen is that I wanted to see how Horizon Forbidden West would have done without Elden Ring near it because you know that for the rest of this generation it's going to be that Horizon Forbidden West failed because of Elden Ring not because of Sony's shortcomings overall. And that's where I have a problem with it because everybody looks for you know this generation, it's all about victimization of everything, right? Yeah. Everybody's a goddamn victim for everything. And they're going to look at this the same way. Horizon Forbidden West is a victim of Elden Ring, right? That's what they're going to do. That's what it's going to be for the rest of the generation. Not, And that's why it pisses me off because now that's where Sony gets that free pass once again to continue to overcharge for these games. And that's where I have the problem because now it's not being put in the spotlight the spotlight has now been moved to Elden Ring. Now, that's another thing, by the way, I was going to say very briefly before we pass off the mic, is that it doesn't come as any surprise to me that Elden Ring is outselling um, Horizon Forbidden West because as I've been saying for a very long time is that Sony no longer has the public mind share. They yep. have lost it. They yes. lost it six months before the PS5 came out and they never regained it. No matter what the uh, the small group of radicals might tell you, they do not have the grasp of the general public. They may still be the market leader riding on the coattails of their last generation, but they do not have the collective mind share of the gaming community now. And that's why I would have paid anything to see how Horizon Forbidden West would have done without Elden Ring coming out four days later or whatever it was, right? So I really would I really would have been interested to see that. But anyways, as a whole, I think in the long run it's going to do well once it gets discounted. Isn't that a weird concept, Boom? Is that Horizon <laughs> uh, Zero Dawn sold 10 million copies after it was heavily discounted? You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I've done so that like, before. That's all I got to say. Well, you know what? But rounding out the topic, and we're gonna get into Gran Turismo Seven. Uh, we got to get Chris Bum. You said save you for last, brother. Listen, it is what it is. Right now, uh, right, the, the, right now, unfortunately, Horizon for, uh, for, uh, Forbidden West is getting its lunch eaten by Elden Ring. Now, that's a multitude of reasons. There are two platforms that it's selling on that it's not selling on, uh, where Horizon is just locked behind PlayStation Four and Five. That that is that a problem? Sure, it, it, it's a problem. But it's a problem that Sony has created for themselves. Now, I'm not suggesting that it should be on Xbox. But day and date releases for PC on a game that big, and, and, and listen, we we've been hearing that the 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 budget for this game was upwards of a hundred plus million dollars. They're not going to make that money back up front. They're not. Uh, and uh, and and the reason why that is is because right now you can only buy it on a PlayStation Four, or PlayStation Five. If if they, they they could get some help in um. You know, if, from PC sales, and here's here's something that's super super interesting, uh, crispy. You know, Sony is very ballsy when it comes to hey, we sold X amount of uh, of copies in X amount hours. You know, look at us, we're shining, we're number one. You know, we have not heard sales of Horizon yet from anyone. I'm assuming being that we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to wait until the end of the month to get those actual numbers, but I have a strong suspicion. That you're going to see, you know, two, two and a half. Let's just go on a high note here and say three million sales of Horizon Forbidden West versus at at that time twenty million copies of Elden Ring. At that's still going. It is going to it's it's going to be bad for Sony. It's going to be bad for Gorilla. What are your thoughts on that? I, I'm actually I'm gonna 
I'm going to go a little reverse on that. I'll get into that. Um, I'm going to take the L. I'm going to take the L. I said, you know, you need an easier, easier playthrough, you know, whether it be a story mode or whatever. I I, I said that. Me said too. That. I, I, was, I was right there with you. And, yes. and I'll tell you something right now. What I see from Elden Ring at this point is that it's a true from software RPG. Yes. Number one. Number two, you can play the way you want to. Yep. Okay. And I get it. Like, you know, the worst part is, is that Sony fans have been clamoring for this game, but I see a lot of Xbox dudes like, yo, I hate it, but I really love it at the same time. And I'm like, I'm like, I got, you got people like Jeff Grubb, like, Hey, I cheese this, this boss. I, I cheesed them. You know what I mean? But I'm sure Jeff Grubb is not talking about how he smashed the next boss, you know, getting all the, the little things that he wanted for that particular playthrough you know there were times you know to your to your point there have been times crispy where you saw the opening part of the show i got my teeth kicked in by the first boss he just kept beating me and beating me and beating me until i figured it out i, I you know I, I i i casted a couple more stuff i brought some more things in with me i i went and got a crafting kit i was able to craft some fire bombs some holy bombs i was throwing stuff at him i threw everything but the kitchen sink but the difference here the difference with this particular Souls game as opposed to many others is that m normally you play Dark Souls 3 and it's in it and a, and a particular level is a very straight You're stuck. Path. You're, you're stuck, you're, right? right? You're stuck. This with what allows you, have. you to say, you know what? This big boss I can't get at right now. Well, I'm going to go take some of these little demigods and level up and you can do it. Yeah, see so that's what I see. I I see something that is gameplay oriented and it's not just gameplay oriented it's gameplay oriented to your specific needs i see people using magic the whole time i see like a uh, dude i've been watching your gameplay boom and and all i see is you using those swords and they do the work you know what i mean and you might be a way higher level you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day i've seen mages or or whatever you want to go just use just use the the cheesiness the the, the magic and, yeah and whatever whatever they you know that player wants to do and and it's hard i mean i'll be honest with you it is way harder for an xbox person to love a souls game and this is still i see people getting beat all the time but then they're like i came back and i did it you know what I mean? And I use a different mentality or I use a different magic or whatever it may be. I use the wolves, you know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things I'm like, man, I actually like, I have to admit, I really want to play this game. And it's, I, dude, it's so good. Chris, and, Chris, can I add to your point? So like, I, I think that's, that's, that's an important that's an important thing about this game, right? Because I hated this uh, when I first started, just like you said. But you can find a way to play that suits your style. I, first yeah. thing I had to do was remap the buttons. That was the first thing. Uh, because doing melee with triggers just doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, uh, I remapped it, and I leveled up before I started going around in the world. And now I'm not strong enough to just go and punch everybody in the face but I don't have to skulk around like it's a stealth game anymore. I can move around the world with confidence and I feel good to explore. And the, the world opens up when you're not running around scared. So it's kind of like you might get beat, but then go level so, yourself up. And so you can that's, move that's around my, like that. you, you have just completely cleared up my point. There are some people that are godlike and they use mm -hmm. the stealth element. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of those things like I see the you're gonna see me play. using stealth. Look, 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 watch. Look, I'm still I'm still a little, I'm still a little yeah. G here. You look like Assassin's Creed, like back exactly. in the day. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of it, okay, I get it. Like people, you know, that are playing through Horizon Forbidden West aren't playing Elden Ring for a reason. It would be like me playing Gears or something like that. Halo, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you, you just don't want to touch it, but you're still sitting there with like the side eye, like. What's going on here? Because I see somebody killing this boss, you know, cheesing it. And, and you know what? 
you could say cheese in it and you could say hey i was i was uh you know kind of just you know using the magic and just sitting there but i got stuck what? you in were a guy's smart feet. enough you were smart enough to jump up on this ledge <laughs> and and just do, and, and you know what you, you can say what you want but you beat him and you beat him easily you know what i mean so if you're smart enough to jump on the ledge and you have the the tools like the magic and everything else it's like, well, why not do it? You know what and, I mean? Like, and, it's not like Boom, who's sitting at level 72, which I'm like, oh, my my head is blown up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kid, sitting at level 72 head. and just taking two swords going, fuck you. No. <laughs> but you well, know, you know, language. Each one of those swords are plus five because I keep finding the stuff and I and I don't want I don't want to get rid of them and I keep I keep I keep one of the swords I got now is as big as me. And he carries it on his it's so big he rests on his shoulder, but it does 280 damage per hit. Here's, and I here's, keep leveling well, it up and leveling it up. It's I just, just want to say this, and I'm gonna end it at this. Okay, from <laughs> software has proved, okay. With this game, okay, and they probably maybe if I was a Souls guy, I would know better. But from what I see from this game, the amount of gravitas, the amount of people that just love it Xbox, PlayStation, whatever that have played it they have proved that gameplay is king. Yes, indeed. Yes, 100%. That's that's what I, yes, one 1000%. And I, and, I, and I think, I think we're moving into a new, uh, uh, trend for for big budget games, and I was saying this on Saturday, right? Like usually, it's kind of left to the indie games who can't afford to do those, um, you know what I mean? Those cutscenes that they pretend you're controlling, but you're really not. Where it's like, oh, here's a fancy camera angle, and this in slow motion. Press the X button just in time, and then we'll go to the next shot, right? I think a lot of AAA games have been permeated with that style of um, sort of. Uh, sort of act, the, the FMV, you know, um, um, Dragon's Lair kind of thing is what I call it anyway. Um, but I think between Elden Ring, between Halo Infinite, and as much as I hate that game Returnal, I think we're seeing a new trend in this in the AAA space of gameplay being king and they're not trying to fool you with uh, pretty particle effects. Well, and let's be and honest. Let's be honest, real quick. Horizon Forbidden West looks better than this game. One thousand times better. Hundred times better. And I see, I see very a few and far between people saying, "Hey, there's a glitch here" or something like that. From saw is is now gone into the upper echelon, and I actually agree that like now they gotta prove that they are at that watch point. this you know what this I'm is this is the guy i ran from the last time he's a demi human <laughs> but i got my wolf pack which by the way if i can give anyone advice get find the wolves they are so dope. this reminds me this reminds me of night wolf playing mk you know what i mean once you learn all his moves dude he's he's i've played people that have just absolutely destroyed me with night wolf and he's one of the harder players that kelly right. has here we go here we go okay yeah. so <laughs> And you know, it's another thing about this, right? What 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 I think the beauty of this game is whether you go and you just have the skills to beat the boss up front by dying a bunch of times to understand the timing, or you put in the work to level up or get the right weapon, you still have to put in the work to beat that boss. Yes. Whether you do it up front by grinding or you do it, it uh, uh, right in the moment by just uh, trying your wits, Either way, you are putting in work to beat that boss, and that's the beauty of it. And I think that's why across the board you see that this is uh, connecting with so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people listen, enjoy a challenge. Is this is what a what a great way to open up the show? Um, obviously, Elden Ring. I know I, I know that we're going to get some people in the chat. I, I'm trying to read the chat at the same time and, and and run the show. A lot of people are like, yeah, Elden Ring, whatever. But it, it's worthy of a conversation because right now it is dominating all of the news feeds and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of that conversation because like I said, I'm not a souls guy and I'm almost, I'm almost at 50 hours in level 72 and I, all I want to do is play it. Like nothing else is going to exist. No matter. And I'm finding places now that are so incredible. Like I found an entire 
universe underneath the world of Elden Ring. If the elevator would, the, the, to get down here was it was about a minute long. That's how long it was. And when you look up, you saw me take pictures all over my socials. It's like stars everywhere. It, it's it's incredible what they've done with this game. But I do have to move on to the big topic, to the headline topic of tonight. And that is what is going on with Gran Turismo 7 by Polyphony Studio. Uh, this is the follow-up to the very ho-hum GT Sport. Um, this game was delayed numerous times. Uh, visually, on the replays, it's godlike, but actual playthrough, from what I've seen, is it's just not that appealing when you talk about comparing it to its direct competitor, and that is Playground Games and Turn 10 Studios. Uh, to me, it's a, it's a fine game. Uh, I will never buy it because I'm not spending 7643 in New York for a game that looks like uh, it could have come out five years ago. Uh, like I said, I've seen the replays, and the replays are really good. The ray tracing that they use on when you blow out the car uh, to see all of the inner workings of it, the motor, the dashboard, that looks really good. But the, the actual gameplay, uh, to me, it looks and it appears like they're skating. Like it's, it's, it's muddy. Like, yeah, it's Bloody that dude. like it's like it's not even. And again, if you saw um, uh, on Friday, Dealer Gaming, friend of this program, friend of the community, posted a video of the rally, and it looked it looked awful. It just looked terrible. Um, but listen, let me catch up some of the super chats, and we'll get into it right away. We also have JC. I want to make sure I spell I sell it. Uh, Carla Moore. Call him a row. That's what it is. Yes. Uh, drops an outstanding $2 super chat and says, LOL. My wife said, tell uh, Emerald. Hi, good show, bud. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I had his money. Thank you for the compliment. <laughs> um, Andrew Cullion uh, drops an outstanding $2 super chat and says, didn't Forbidden West sell uh, 20 million the first week? No, it, it actually didn't. I think he's being funny, but no, it actually did not. So 20 million. Like I said, we don't know the numbers. I think that uh, it's probably going to have, I, I would, I would like to think that it sold two to 3 million. Um, it's possible, but again, it does get held back because it's only on two platforms. That's, that's a big problem. Uh, Tempest Sun, our good mm. brother, drops an outstanding $5 super chat. And hold your ears, Everborn Saga. Mag is 1 billion percent right on Breath Best of the Wild. Best super chat of the year. Watch your mouth. You know, banned. Banned. Where's, where's this guy? He's Take gone. the hammer away from Everborn. That was the best uh, That was the best super <laughs> chat of the year. By the way, boom, uh, if you read, Andrew Cullinane actually sent a second super chat to correct himself. Oh, he said, I, mi I, I misread the article. So, so, so Zero Dawn hit 20 million before for Ben West. He dropped the five additional five dollars super chat. And uh, Dutch had to jump out. He's not feeling well. We're going to see if we can get him back in here before uh, the show ends. But Dutch, if you, feel, if you have to drop out, brother, listen, you know what? Uh, I know he gets migraines. I get him too, so I understand. But hopefully we can get Dutch by the back end. But listen, let, let, let's get into these egregious numbers. Now, it was... Like I said in the opening, and I, I do wanna I do wanna say it again because I have been notorious to call out the gaming media for their bias, and I will continue to do so uh, because that is just who I am. Uh, but in this particular case, I must credit the gaming media, places like um, IGN, places like Forbes places like game rant and so many others and i and, and actually I, do i have it here i think i wrote it down on who it was yeah here it is uh uh push square uh vg2247 uh the vgc video games chronicle ign game rant comicbook.com forbes and even Eurogamer called out sony for what if you didn't know and let, let's just bring up some of the uh, comparison prices so everyone is on board here. The Porsche 919 Hybrid 2016, originally in Gran Turismo Sport, which released a couple of years ago, uh, could be bought for $3 in, new, in, in actual cash. Well, right now, if you want to buy that game, uh, that game, if you want to buy that car, it costs you... 30 uh 3 million credits and that equates to $40 US bucks. So $3 for the same car in Gran Turismo Sport 
now costs you $40. The Aston Martin Vulcan 16 in GT Sport was $5. It, it is now in Gran Turismo 7, $40. The McLaren P1 GTR 2016 edition was 5 bucks in GT Sport if you didn't want to grind for it. Well, right now it's $40. It's 3.6 million credits. Uh, the Audi R18 TD1 2011 edition was $3 in Gran Turismo Sport just a couple of years ago. Well, right now it's 3 million credits, which equates to $40. And here's what's interesting and ridiculous. It has been reported, ladies and gentlemen, that as the real world numbers and prices for these cars change, meaning that if, if tomorrow the Aston Martin Vulcan 16 goes up to 4 million credits, well, it's going to be 4 million credits in the game. You, that's right. You heard me right. Real world price changes will come to the cars that you're playing and you're trying to you know grind out. Now, I've seen some people defending this. I've seen people say, well, boom, on a good race, you can get 60,000 credits if you put it on easy. And I say, well, that's wonderful. But all I can say is that if you can buy the Volk, the Aston Martin Vulcan for 60,000 credits, then you're onto something. But you can't because it costs 3.3 million credits. So just, I don't know, do the math yourself as to 60,000, how many times you're going to have to run the same race on easy to be able to afford to buy one of the cars. It's ridiculous. Anyone that defends this pricing is, listen, look yourself in the mirror. You are a part of the problem. I'm here to tell you, don't defend this. To put down the, the console war stuff and let's act like adults. If Microsoft did this in, in uh, Forza Motorsport or Forza Horizon 5, I would have done a special show to let Microsoft, Phil Spencer, and the people at Turn 10 and Playground Games know that this is egregious. And they and they would have made changes because the community at, as a whole would have come out to say something. Though there are people defending this. Mag, I got to go to you first on this. Yeah. Obviously, Dr. Pony, you know, you're a special guest for this evening. You put down <laughs> a surgery to save someone's life to be here to defend your, your brand. Now, all jokes aside, <laughs> th these prices yeah. are just, th they're unacceptable on any level. I don't, and what's frustrating is we have seen DLC and microtransactions take points away from a game yes. when they're upfront and known. Sony hid all of these prices from the reviewers, and it did not come out until that morning, which is three days after the embargo lifted, when mm -hmm. all of the reviews came out. I, th I call bullshit on this, and I mm -hmm. hope the rest of the world does as well. Isn't it weird that the same thing happened just a few short years ago with Battlefront 2? Yep. When the review codes were out... They did not have that pay to win scenario in the review codes. The review codes d were, were completely absent and void of all those microtransactions and the pay to win scenario and everything else. After the game released is when that, that fiasco happened. Yep. So what ended up happening is that EA took the heat. I mean, no, they took a lot of heat because what happened is everybody bought the game up front because the reviews were great. And of course, it's Star Wars. Let's face it, big IP, right? And the same thing happened, but for some strange reason, well, mind you, it's not that strange. Sony continuously gets away with whatever bullshit they can get away with year after year after year, yep. and they do it blatantly and more bold than ever, and they stick it in your face, and they say, you're going to eat what I'm giving you, and they make literally not one apology, not one change, nope. not one anything. They don't even they address it. Nope, they don't even address it. And they're like, you're going to like what I'm giving you. And basically, they're just like, yeah, whatever scraps are on the table, that's what you eat. And you're going to love it. You're going to love thing, Crazy Taxi. Yeah. <laughs> Sites, like you said, boom, been calling them out. Still nothing happens. The fans calling them out. Still nothing happens. The critics calling them out. Still nothing happens.
Why is this? We have to get to the root of the problem of why is this happening? Why are Sony never held accountable yes. for anything? Yep. And then when someone tries to, people defend it. I don't understand. It's like defending a criminal who has been convicted and it's been proven that this person is a criminal and people will come out and defend it. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know, the problem is, is that there are too many boom. You, you, you said it right in your, your opening, uh, your opening speech there with this topic. Okay. There are too many blind supporters who continue to allow this to happen. And that is the biggest problem. And yes. the thing is, the reason why is because Sony knows that there is a percentage of their fans that will buy their stuff no matter what they do or no matter what they charge. And therefore that will accumulate enough to, uh, to, to turn up or at least break even. And then they might piss off, like, let's say 15 to 20 percent of the other fans, which they weren't counting on anyway. And then they're like, OK, well, then we're still going to get them on the back end. And then when the game gets uh, reduced in price, we're still going to turn a profit. Right. That's the way they think, because they're scumbags. That's yeah. the way. So I'm sorry. Hey, Sony are uh, scumbags. There's no uh, uh, second way around it. I'd like to present a, a dissenting opinion when you're done, Mac. Of course. Now, the thing is. You look at this new game. Now, look at the reviews of this new game, too. I've seen... Nah, I'm not playing it, okay, mind you. Okay, so I'm, I'm not really talking about from my point of view, but from what I've seen from people that have actually been playing it. I wish Dutch was still here to talk about this. Um, The technical issues, the technical problems. That's something that I, I, I don't understand how they got a pass on that, right? And yeah. they got a pass on that. It's just like, okay, well, you know, Forza Motorsport had, you know, if they had a technical issue, they'd be calling out on it. Then they did. And then on top of that, what you guys were talking about at the beginning of the show about the faux micro microtransactions, okay, which weren't even microtransactions, mind you. The reason why that was all about the hype, it was a pile on the bunny situation because it was during that time of that battlefront to, you remember that? That's all people talked about yep. for like eight months. Microtransactions, right? And it was a big, like, evil, it was a big evil word. Right, so everybody was saying that for like eight months straight. Well, it was so was bad, Mag, that Disney yep. themselves had to get involved. <laughs> that's right, and so that there was that. That was during the same time that Forza Motorsport Seven came out, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere within that area. And then on top of it, let's also face it, it was also during the time when it was cool to, you know, crap Jump all over Xbox. Xbox. Yes, right. Pile on the bunny, right? Make fun of Xbox. They were the, the butt of every butt end of every single joke. They were this and that and the other thing. It was ridiculous. And you know, I I don't understand it. Now, now to go into this game, um, it would cost me. I already costed it out. Okay. For if I were to buy the game and one car would cost me $165. Holy matrimony. And that's, that's ridiculous. That's the base game. That's not like, you know, the special edition or the whatever. The base game. What's crazy is the collector's edition yep. only came with 1.5 million in credits. So if you need it, so in some aspects, you would have to buy the collector's edition and still figure out another way, probably real world money, to get 1.5 million to get that three $3 million credit card. That right. is egregious. Yep. And so, and, and like I said, I'm not the most expensive com uh, country in the world when it comes to Sony games. Okay. I I'm, I'm, we're up there, obviously. But yeah, it would cost for the base game. We're talking like just base game, and one car would cost $165. All right. So that is almost half a switch, let's say. Yeah. That's okay? ridiculous, dude. Uh, that's $50 off from a switch light, to be quite honest. That is less than a hundred dollars from an oculus quest 2 yes you know that's about 45 percent of a playstation 5 console okay that's what it would cost for that one game and you know and then they wonder why games like horizon forbidden west um you know absolutely drop right off the face of the earth okay because you know the hardcore is gonna buy it and by the way just in case anybody's confused out there I'm the hardcore too because I bought Horizon Forbidden West day one. When yeah, a lot of people too. who criticize the stuff that I say, those idiots didn't even buy it yet. All right. I bought it. I'm the early adopter. I'm the guy who buys Sony games day one, not you. And the thing is, the people who criticize me, those are the guys who don't even buy the goddamn game at all. Yeah. And that's the funny thing because they like to play, you know, as the, as the kids like to say, they like to play Twitter, not on the consoles. Right. So, anyway, that's the way I see about that. So, the thing is, it's like, what are they doing here? <coughs> charging, excuse me, 
Charging that kind of price is like what 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 are you guys trying to prove here? It almost seems like they're trying to force themselves to fail. I can't understand what exactly they're trying to do in a climate and never mind the current situation which which which, ha- which is happening in Europe that has caused the United States prices to skyrocket, which is by the way utterly ridiculous because it's got nothing to do with the ch- with the uh, supply chains in North America, none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing that's kind of that's just people taking advantage. But the thing is, Sony's been doing all this crap in the middle of the pandemic when yep. people have been losing their jobs, getting paid less, getting less hours, getting government assistance because maybe all their business is closed. OK, and things shut down and a lot of a lot of families lost their hats during that during that time and during this time that we're we're still kind of in it. Right. So they did all this before the conflict in Europe. Okay, this was happening two years before. During this pandemic, they've been charging more. They've been trying to just absolutely just crush people's wallets. I don't understand how people are just to sit back and just take it from one company only, but everybody else gets nailed to the cross. But these guys just walk around like cock of the walk. You know, the pimp just coming out like this, swinging his arms and just, get, you know, scot-free. And I don't Let understand get that baby powder, baby. I don't understand. I just pictured Kramer in the in the pimp. Uh, you know, get up I'm picturing from, uh, is, Seinfeld. Yeah, or aquarium <laughs> or aquarium platform shoes with like a gold a goldfish inside of the heels. You know what I'm saying? Like they're just walking around like nothing, like nothing's wrong, and they're just gouging and just crushing people's souls and wallets during this time. I know that sounds a little bit melodramatic, but let's face it. I mean, this is absolutely egregious, and this is just no different. And to me, this isn't an isolated incident. This is just another chapter in the long book of their bull crap that they've been pulling for years, and it's time that they're held accountable for it. Yeah. I mean, listen, you're onto something there. Uh, l- let's bring Kay Asante in on the conversation. Kay Asante, you've seen, you, you know, you didn't get a chance to talk about it as much as you wanted to on Saturday, but you're here today, and we want to get your full your full throttle opinion on it. Um I mean, honestly, listen, their games are 70 bucks. Now, now, like as someone that used to buy every first party game because I like buying those games, I am now, I take a hard pause on them because a game like Gran Turismo, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to buy it just like Dark Souls and I'm going to put an hour into it. And I'm like, well, I just threw away 76 bucks. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. Now, if they had an Xbox Game Pass type of situation where I could play the game, I would have actually given it a shot. But I'm not going to drop my money on that. Where do you fool that the game itself, base game, is 76 bucks, And then on top of that, these pricing. So before I even tell you what my thoughts are, I'm like, you a bold man. That's a deep hole. He's just about to jump. Amazing. Yeah, watch. Man. You're going to see. I, 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 I threw some rocks down. There's some water I there. You. I yeah, see so. I'm like, Are you yeah. playing a Plague's Tale too? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. About to see a bunch Those of rats. Those are some big rats. Anyway. <laughs> I'm looking so, for yeah. Amicia. So basically, this whole thing, uh, this this kind of this was part of the conversation I had on Saturday. Uh, we didn't speak specifically about GT7, but the main idea is still stands, right? I honestly think that there should be a better protocol for reviews. Like there should be a better understanding of how reviews are put together because. Even if you take them at the, um, if you take the, the folks reviewing them at their word, a lot is being missed, right? Beyond the pricing here. The pricing is ridiculous, like you said. And to that, I think that's just Sony spending their political capital. They have earned such goodwill in the market. You know, as Mag says, they can get away with whatever they want. PlayStation has become the name of gaming for a lot of people. Remember remember the 90s when people, I think Everborn said this on Saturday, remember the 90s when people went, oh, get off your PlayStation or get off your Nintendo, even though you're playing yep. Xbox, right? Like yeah. PlayStation is Pampers, right? Pampers isn't an actual thing, it's just the brand, but people just use that as the shorthand for the brand. PlayStation has become gaming and that is political capital. And because yeah. of that, they can stretch intelligence and make you spend so much money and do all this. And even in the rare times when they when they capitulate and they say, okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna you know uh, uh, honor our deal and make you and give you a free update. You know, they have trained people so well that you got everyone going. No, nah, I don't see that. You know, I'm just gonna give you the extra ten dollars because I don't want to deal with the BS, right? And that's not his fault. 
because they have trained people but, well. But, they really. I, have. I didn't buy that game though, sir. You true, were the one true, who you gave them your money. True, you didn't. No, no, no. But 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 even if you did give him that money, right? And and to, to your even your point, you didn't buy that game. If you check the statistics of people who actually ended up paying the full seventy dollars for that sixty dollar game, it is still insane because they were successfully duped into thinking seventy was the only price to pay, mm-hmm. right? It's this is exactly the same thing. They they need to be held accountable, and as long as there is no protocol, if you will, that everyone follows. They get to make it up in the middle uh, as they go, right? They get to do that. Damn, that's a big rat. Holy crap, you, you're scaring me. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't think rats like that are in France. That is just, that is a monster there, rat but, right you know. there. Ooh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Huge, bigger than the dude. Like, we get out of here with all that. Anyway, so. You know, Wait till you see the ants. Oh, bro, God, I didn't even know there were ants in this game. I don't like ants. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's funny because uh, Jez Corden, who has 100 yeah. hours in, Saw a boss that I fought, and he's like, I, I have 100 hours in. I didn't fight that boss. Wait, so someone was like, oh, no, it's it's where the ants are. And he said, and I quote, yeah. I saw those ants, and I got the F out of Dodge. That's right. It looks <laughs> it looks like grounded, like, hardcore style. Like huge oh, those monster. ants are big. They're, they're like, twice the size as, as the character. <laughs> they're bigger than the rat, by the way. The big rat, so, not the small ones. But continue. <laughs> so bringing it back back to, to, uh, to GT, even beyond the pricing, right? Uh, we've spoke. The first thing I saw when I saw that game, I was like, they look like they're floating on top of the road, not on the road, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, everybody will make their comparisons against Forza. Which, let's be honest, if you do make your comparison against Forza, it makes GT look even worse because Forza, uh, the the Forza Five, is a open world game, which would make different decisions, which would then lead to less quality looking game because you have to expend your resources elsewhere. Because it's an open world game, correct. That's right. And right now, four to five, and GT Seven are neck and neck. You know, depending on what what video visuals you see, you'll say one versus the other, which doesn't bode well for GT Seven, right? Mm-mm. You would think more of the there'd be more money on the screen. That's one thing. If you even compare it to its direct competitor, which is the five year old game, that is also not a great comparison for for GT Seven, <laughs> right? It's very odd that this is the the case because let's be honest here, let's be real, right? Uh, 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 Polyphony Digital set the standard. That Forza, that, that Forza had to meet, right? They yeah. were the industry standard. They were the best of the best, right? And beyond the graphics, which is very weird in Uncanny Valley, you know, they, they put G, they put uh, RT, but only in the places that look shiny, not in actual gameplay. You know, uh, they they opted for less, uh, less uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, licensed music. So sometimes you just get really weird, like, off There's actually music. no licensed music in G- in Gran Turismo it's, Seven. It's the craziest thing, yeah. and and it's kind of like uh, like the Mag brought out today, which is which is a good pull, by the way. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, no, I, either it was a Mag or maybe Crispy who who pulled it up. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Crazy Taxi. Imagine a new version oh. of Crazy Taxi <laughs> without Offspring, without any of those the, the songs. Imagine a, 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 a Tony Hawk without any of its music, and then they go, mm-hmm. yeah, here's the new one. And oh, by the way, uh, your, your 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 skateboard that used to cost you two dollars in wor- real world currency now costs you fifty dollars. Like that's just inc- crazy, insane, right? They are it's hubris. They are spending their political capital, and of course, because like you know, uh, some reviews will be very technical and take off every point for every single thing that happened, and other reviews will go screw it. This thing is excellent gameplay, hundred percent across the board. Because that's the world we live in. They can set their own standard, and by and large, people go, well, gaming is PlayStation, PlayStation is gaming, so here you go, right? I won't be, I won't say that it's a, I won't give it the cynical view that they did it on purpose or they're being shady. The shady part I will give up is the fact that they released these updates after the reviews are out. That is 100% shady. There's no denying that. But beyond that, I think... The reason why they get to get away with stuff like this, right? And of course, they get away with it because they're the market leaders. Xbox mm-hmm. wouldn't. We already know all that. If, if let's say we lived in a world where there were rules of engagement for reviews that IGN, GameSpot, all of them, oh, in order to be part of uh, uh, Metacritic, you have to adhere to these standards. These are your criteria that you, that you must hit on every game you play. Yes, games are different but graphics are graphics right 
you know, and if, if you don't choose to uh, adhere to graphics and you don't choose to adhere to certain variables, you must defend why you chose not to. You, you know what I'm saying? There needs to be a tie that binds all these reviews. And when that happens, these review these uh, manufacturers of games will no longer have such a mushy middle that where they can fill it in with whatever they choose to fill it with. You know what I'm saying? Then you don't you won't live in a world where today they'll only give you the PC build because it happens to be the only good one, you know, or they'll give you the PS4 version and insist that you play it on PS5. You know, they get to set a lot of standards that they get away with because there is no other authority that can literally say nah player we, we ain't we ain't letting you do this yes they just get to do whatever they want yep. because god forbid you say no then all of a sudden you're no longer in the in crowd right and the next game that comes out you won't get that 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 code beforehand yep right that's it's exactly what happened that's exactly what happened to survivor yeah there, yeah. there needs to be, and, I, and I'm going to say the U word, and a lot of people are going to bristle, but there needs to be some kind of unionized, like, like protocol that every one of them agrees to follow. That way, Jesus if you Christ. Sh shut your mouth, everybody. <laughs> that way, there comes if, the Europeans. If, no, no, stop it. That way, if you act like crappy to Survivor, right, <laughs> then IGN won't look at you. Then GameSpot won't look at you. And then well, all of a sudden, your, I, your, your promotional arm becomes a little less than, and you have to adhere to better standards. Survivor is the biggest Australian. Yes. yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Australia cares about this. So yeah. th there's a problem there. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and as long as Survivor gets to stand on its own, then whether it be IGN, there was a time when, there was a time when even, uh, what do you call it, ZeniMax used to go like, no more previews for anybody. We'll just you'll just play it the day day and date like everybody else because they got sick and tired of people dogging them on their on their Bethesda bugs, right? Remember that was a couple of years ago, and all that is allowed when you don't have any leg to stand on. When you're when IGN is IGN, but what about the mom and pop guys trying to survive, right? They yes. have to adhere to what they have to adhere to, otherwise they won't be able to get their hands on on the product that that's their livelihood anymore. That is not fair for them. Right. Yeah. So let's take 100%. it. Let's take these guys for what they well, for, uh, earnestly, even though we know there's a cynical side of it. Let's take them earnestly and say, hey, there's a gap. So they're filling it any way they, they so choose. They're a business. May, they're a money making entity. Fine. Right. We all they all need to come together, whether it be the polygons and the, and the Kotaku's and all of them and basically establish the rules of the road that all of them adhere to. And so if you want them, them to collude. Mess, I want them to collude. Yes. Okay. The only the only thing okay. that's the only thing that's going to be different is their opinions, not how they not how they critique. Because that way, if they try to divide you, then you know they can't divide and conquer, which is what they're doing today. They're literally dividing and conquer by going, "Hey, are you a PlayStation dude? Are you in the dude. in crowd? If you're in the in crowd, you get the code. If you try to be critical, guess what? You're not in the in crowd anymore." Come on now. Well, that let me work. ask you a question though. Do you want mm. uh because I told you I was here for the dissenting opinion tonight? Please, yes, yes, do, yes. Do, do you want a consortium that uh -huh. basically acts as network television, so to speak, that is gonna decide these things? Because it may say, okay, they need to get together to push back against the big publishers, mm -hmm. but what about the small developers? If all of those places get together, does that create an environment for them? where they're now having to force them themselves as the round peg into the square hole that is the rubric that uh I mean, all honestly, these guys, guys I see got what you're saying. I see what you're saying and there there is a potential for some of that so obviously there needs to be some some guardrails there right obviously nothing goes How about another regulatory body shut your mouth they, they, ah. they, nothing goes too far to the left nothing goes too far to the right or any other direction without it needing to be reined in I get that but as it stands today, there's a lot of mushy middle there. How long it took you to review it? Did you get it beforehand? Did you pay for did you pay for it by yourself? Did they tell you you're only allowed to show A instead of B? You know, we're in a in a multi-console generation, but they only gave you the PlayStation version or the only the Xbox version. And all you have to do is say, Yes, sir, may I have another? Because God forbid you don't, next time you don't get to be part of the part of the conversation. All that needs to stop. And how that stops is by us demanding that it needs to stop. Yes, 
is it an easy solution to come up with a different solution? Of course not. I, I hear your Everborn, I, I hear your choices on, hey, maybe we should we should do away with review scores altogether and 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 give you give us the buy, don't buy situation. But that would require leadership from a place like Metacritic, a place that, you know, people buy into Metacritic. You have to get to a certain prestigious level in order to be included into Metacritic. Yeah, but right? Meta Metacritic doesn't have to they're using a calculation based on that score, which is sure. different rubrics from different outlets. So they, if it's at Metacritic, Metacritic could do the buy, don't buy, and omit the scores. They could very easily do well, that but without know, even you know, asking the you know reviewers. What that is. You know I, what I, that think, is. I think one of the biggest problems with Metacritic, uh, structurally speaking, is that they're not all, all reviews not on a 10-point scale. That's some, right. Some of them are yeah. on a five-point uh, scale. Yeah. Some of them are on a letter yeah, they scale. They take each review you, how you, it comes. It has to even, be a unified thing. And even worse, they also take the reviewers on a different scale as well. So even if I do a one to ten and IGN does a one to ten, that's right. They hit, when IGN speaks, that counts for twenty, thirty. Yeah, you get they get a bigger slice of the pie. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So it yep. always ends up skewed in the wrong way. That is the reason why Elden Ring came out and it was like, this is the biggest, best game on human earth and every human being should play it. No, only well, people okay. who love Souls games should, yeah, should, you know. No, but I see, I disagree with that because a no, bunch and, of people and, and being, who don't love derivative. Souls games I'm are... being derivative. I'm being derivative, I know. But at the end of the day, you understand my point. You made, made a good point. Normally, review scales are like 150 plus. This was only 44. And it still ended up meaning the same thing. This is the best. That is not a. That is not a. a it is a, not a group that you can take seriously when the average group is a hundred plus, right? Okay. Just really quickly because uh, I, I want to come back to that point and why yeah, 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 I disagree ahead, yeah. and a, a potential solution. But before yeah. we lose the the track, Please. GT Seven. This is where I wanted to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dissent. Um, I say I'm fine with the prices, right? There's a lesson that my father taught me as a kid, and it was a fool and his money are soon parted. Mm -hmm. And so all of these support the devs people because the poor devs got to eat and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the $3,000 PC crowd, and you got to buy your games. You got to buy every game day one. And, these subscription services are ruining the industry. All those guys are the guys who are going to spend $40 on cars. And I say, let them. Let them spend the money and let them learn. That's it. Charge whatever you like. Because and, and you, you know what? Think, they got it. You honestly think that, and I, 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 if I understand what you're saying here, you honestly think that by virtue of them not getting what they thought they would get, that would teach the... the, 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 the no. Uh, I don't want to teach Sony anything. I well, want these you, people but don't you to realize, waste their money. Yeah, but no, don't you because normal people are mean? not going to spend forty dollars on a car. No, I understand. Max that. saw that he's not going to spend it. I'm not nope. even buying that game. Of so, course, but but that's my point though. Like some people, like just like people love have come to love Forza, right? Uh, 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 GT is a it's, it's it's an industry. Like people play that game for years with a capital Y, you know. And this stuff stops that from continuing forward, right? I understand what you're saying, and you have every ability to say so. Pixel Bit G it, says those poor Tesla driving developers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's I, not I get wrong. What, he's not wrong. I get what you're I saying. I bet you I don't buy a forty dollar car in Forza when that comes out either. All I'm but saying, that, if you're dumb enough to pay like forty dollars for a car in a game, yeah, but see, then go ahead and do that. More see, but power not, to no, you. But not everyone. And I got a bridge to sell you. Not not everyone nope. should be should be uh, uh, should be put in that category. Some people genuinely enjoy that game and want to continue enjoying that game. And for them, this is terrible, right? Yeah, but, those who are, those cappers and those console warriors who defend everything, you're absolutely right. But not everybody's in that. Group, but you know what, right? though, Asante, the thing is, though, Sony wouldn't make a move like this unless uh, they already knew in advance that someone that is going work. to be spending that cash. So yeah. they must so, have some so, kind of metric so, that we don't know about of how many people spend money on DLC after the fact, mm -hmm. right? Well, they Jake must Wade have. in the chat says Gran Turismo has a huge fan base. Indeed, it does. That's a yeah, great point. It does, yeah. but that. But, hey, but here's the thing. What, you, what do you, I always call it? Asshole tax. Yes. Yeah. If well, you get caught out there for a forty dollar DLC. You got what? You, 
you 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 paid that uh you, you, you know paid that you gotta, you gotta, i hear what you're saying and you gotta it makes keep sense. that same energy i mean battlefront 2 got absolutely trash guess what you buy a, a brand new car guess what it's actually better than half the people are playing with and you can beat the game quicker this is called pay to win, bro. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? Let, 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 in fact, let, let's bring in Crispy Bomb, and then we'll come to Everborn on uh, and closing it out. Because here's the thing: I hear what Everborn is saying, Crispy. Mm -hmm. Oh well, don't buy it. It's forty dollars. It's a waste. I, I, and I, and I hear what you're saying. But here's the thing: the fact that it exists in a game that costs seventy six forty three to buy, and there's forty dollar cars. That you need to progress through the game that if you don't have the time see that's the thing that annoys me about the defenders of this you know not everyone can sit in front of their screen for nine hours and grind through a game nor should you have to okay you should play the game and be rewarded properly that does not seem to be the case that's going on with this right now you're paid again we only listen I could bring up 60 more cars that are have egregious pricing, but we we only have a two hour show. So Crispy, I, my 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 question to you is if we as consumers don't take Sony to task, then they're just gonna continue to get away with this. They have not answered this call since it was revealed on Friday. They have not taken questions from the press saying, Well, why was this hidden? from us but when we were doing the review how come see and here's the thing a lot of people don't know i have been very blessed to be given two review packages from microsoft directly from microsoft i was able to review gears and i was able to review forza horizon 5 and in my press kit i had all of the detailed information that was available for launch as well as what was going to potentially come at a later date I'm sure that that Sony withheld all of these ridiculous prices from from the press because they knew it would hurt its review. Forget the fact that the cars actually look like they're floating on on water or on ice. Forget that fact. They but the the pricing is again it's egregious and we have to say something. I, like I said, I have no problem taking one of my shows and dedicating 60 minutes to this because if no one else is going to talk about it, well, that's good on them. I will. What are your thoughts on these this, this pricing structure that needs to go away? Sony has to address this. And they, as of today's show, they have not. Well, let's put it this way, okay? Nobody's perfect, all right? But, man... I can go and play free to play like Fortnite or Halo Infinite multiplayer. And if I'm that good, guess what? I you can level win. up and you get all the gear for nothing. Okay. I can win. No, no, no. no. See, you gotta you gotta take it back real quick, boom. You gotta realize, all okay? right. I play these games not for the look of my character, but I can win. And this is where I go and I'm like. How can you compare, like, for example, Gears 5, okay? I can go and pay $10 to have a a uh, a skin that's like black steel, and I can have black steel cape, okay? And it's going to do nothing for me, okay? Except I'm happy of what I look at, okay? Now, you go and take GT7, for example, and you say, okay, I pay $40. I get a, it's a sim, by the way. Everybody quotes sim, remember? Sim racer, okay? So the specs of the car should be simulation status. I'm not saying it's perfect. But what I'm saying is, is hypothetically, you go and say, okay, I started out with a Mini Cooper, for example. This is, I, I, I don't know. I haven't played the game. I refuse to at this point. And then I pay $40 and have a Skyline GTR. Who's going to get through the game quicker? Yeah. Who's going to get? I mean, seriously. It's, it's pay to win, okay? Like, it might not be against people, but it's pay to win. This is 
This is egregious tactics. It's it's absolutely incredible that Sony has said we are games as a service. Well, here, let's throw this out there. And on top of that, from what I've seen from Xbox or PlayStation people that have played the game, that have put put everything they've played on social media. You can literally use your phone and see the difference between Forza Horizon 5 and GT7. You can see the difference. And the difference is crazy because number one, Forza Horizon 5 is an open world game. It is open world and it looks spectacularly better than, than your linear racing around the track. Okay? That is number one. Number two, the game physics are not right. This game has been development at least five years. Maybe. What longer. are you yeah. doing? Yep. What are you doing? All right. Polyphony, I'm sorry, dude. You you are you are not even 88. Man, you should enjoy that. You should really enjoy that because that's fanboys saying, Oh, I love it. And then all of a sudden, some of these these you know publications are like oh man you you have these kind of crazy microtransactions are you kidding me you know what i mean and now they're they're pushing back you know what i mean but sony's saying nothing you know yep. what xbox would do what what do you think xbox would do they come right out and fix it they would fix it or say they're going to fix it yeah and they that they did that when gears five came out because they were they messed up but that was all cosmetics yeah we're talking about cars here cars have different specs okay that's what we're talking about so you can sit here and defend it that's bullshit that's like defending battlefront well i didn't see anybody defending that so get your head out of your ass and realize that they are playing a different game now they're going like 2k status like hey you know gt gta you you play it this way and you gotta pay for it in some way shape or form if you want to play that way you gotta you gotta pay for it that this is not what we want especially from an exclusive that comes from playstation especially exclusive this is a billion dollar friend this is like halo or gears saying pay to win that's what i'm saying yeah yeah Yeah. can i ask a quick question sure did anybody go back and change their reviews or review scores not as far as i know no because i because i know that people did it with elden ring with some of the updates remember there were performance updates that that actually messed up some of the game especially for pc players like even big time names like acg went back and changed his review post release to wait for sale because you know he does that thing he doesn't he has like a buy now wait yeah. or whatever mm-hmm. and he changed his review on elden ring to wait yeah because of the technical issues i want to know if anybody actually had the balls to go back and change their review on on, on uh, gt did anybody, I, I, did, did anybody change the review curious. of horizon forbidden west did anybody i'll tell you right now i saw i'm, so I'm almost guaranteeing the answer no no so many glitches okay and i saw them and Miles Morales as well. And this is not, you know what? People could say, oh, you're just, you know, you're playing on a different console or this that. That's all the excuses I see. And when, when I see, you know, Halo or something have a small little glitch, it's like, oh, wow, this is this is worse than ever before. Fruit. It's like, dude, Remember? get your head out of your ass and understand yeah. that Sony's taking you to the bank and they're taking all your money at the same time. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. Well, I'll tell you right now, I played multiple games that look better than GT7, and that's a racer, and it's a simulation at the same time. That is pathetic. I'm sorry. It is absolutely pathetic, and I don't understand how they think that they're going to just price gouge everybody to get the car they want. That's pretty – I just – I don't understand it, dude. 
I, I agree. Uh, Everborn, listen, we're getting close to the nine o'clock hour. We got to get Meg out of here momentarily because oh, yeah. he's got to get. He's got to get to a meeting. I'll, I'll be quick. Yeah, I'll yeah. I mean, quick. no, no. You don't got to be you quick. Think, just, just give us your give us your spiel, brother. I mean, listen. I, again, I, I I understand that this is one of those situations that you don't have to buy it. That they're not saying that you must buy this forty dollar car. The fact of the matter is, is that there are forty dollar cars, and when you take a direct comparison from GT Sport, which was these cars were three dollars and five dollars, they are now forty dollars. A car that was five bucks has gone up eight times in price. That is ridiculous. Sony needs to come out and just, uh, and talk about it. Whether they're going to change the pricing, whether they're going to offer free credits, what, they're going to have to do something. Putting their head in the sand and not talking about the problem is where we have to put their feet to the fire. I'm sorry. Look, man. All I'm going to say is Sony, more power to you, take their money. And the only lesson you will teach Sony is through the wallet. If it doesn't make dollars, it's not going to make sense to them. So as long as there are people willing to spend $40 on some DLC, they will continue to sell this. You don't teach any company any money by just saying a thing, it has to hurt the bottom line. And if they want to, the reason they're charging uh, $40 is because they got their people out here saying, I will buy anything Sony is selling me because of quality. So I hope the quality is worth $40. I watch people defend this stuff, boom. I yeah, watch all people weekend. say, I saw well, it. inflation and and how about how are they going to make money? And don't be so cheap, you x bot. <laughs> so so pay the $40. Yeah, yeah. Pay uh, that man his money. Right? And and maybe devs. you will maybe you will learn because yeah. you keep going on about how you're so happy to buy games and you're so happy to spend your hard-earned money to just throw it away. So throw that throw your money away. Spend forty dollars on a car, and I hope they raise the price in the sequel. <laughs> That's what I, mean, I hope. Sony, you doing your thing? Keep charging them because they they've proven that they're happy to pay it. Yeah. I so guess. so so, not so wrong. this is not about Sony. This is business. It's not show friends, folks. So if they have a if the market will bear it, they can charge it, and the market or their market is saying yes. Please, sir, I'll have another. So, you, you know what's a crutch in their side, Everborn? What's that? Elden Ring. Yeah. Listen. It is. It, I, it, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I've never seen the community come together on one game more than this game. And you know what? It got a 97. I say, I haven't played it yet, but I can't disagree. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it's one of those things like, you know, I think, you know, they, they, they push back games and they might push them back even farther because Elden Rings ain't, ain't no joke. Like, it's it's not easy. You know what I mean? And people are just enamored with it. And yeah, I think I think Phil personally, like everybody heard those rumors that it was going to be, you know, Xbox marketing. Remember that? You know, yeah. I think Phil played this game, at least a demo of it, and was like, man, I need this. And then Sony came out and said, no, you can't even have it on our console if you do this. And and from soft side, probably like, oh, they returned yeah, the bag. Need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They returned the bag. They well, returned the bag, dude. And that's fine. And, and maybe they were like, this game is better than everybody even realizes. And sure, freaking enough. I mean, you hear those Steam numbers and everything else. Man, the the game is on another level. Fifteen it million is. in a week, bro, and that, and and that's just guesstimating. Because, like I said, ten million confirmed on on Steam. We're only guesstimating fifteen. For all we know, it could be ten million more on Xbox and P and PlayStation Five. It's just it, it's insane to think that like PlayStation underestimated. They really did because they dropped all their big hitters 
right in the same time as this. And well, back to back, right? Back to back. Yeah, Horizon Forbidden West and then and I uh, follow, Gran Turismo. Yeah. And I follow a lot of PlayStation centric gamers that are gamers, okay? That will call it like they see it. And they are absolutely enthralled with Elden Ring. Okay. They don't, they're not even talking about GT7. So that tells me something. You know what I'm saying? As a gamer myself, that tells me something. I said, man, I, I'm I'm suffering from FOMO right now because maybe I should have bought this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and I probably am. And you know what? I, I talked to my girl and she's like, I'm going to try it. You know what I mean? So that that's one of the things. Like, man, you got to see it. And and for them to continue with the $40 is it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, Bonkers. you can take it back and you say, hey, we screwed up. We're fine with that. You know what I mean? We, we, we've seen it before. We called out Xbox, and we had Xbox fanboys sitting there talking trash to us. Remember that, Boom? Yes. Remember that? Remember that whole chat? Like, like every couple comments was, was oh, just deal with it. Just no, pay. Just we pay. deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that, that's one of those things. Like, you got to call it out. You could start there. Maybe you bought it. That's fine. But if it's not acceptable to you, say something. Yeah. No, I, I, absolutely. Well, listen, folks, this has been a great two-hour show. Unfortunately, we had Dutch. He got sick mid-show. He had to bounce out of here. We'll get him back, and I'll check on him after the show uh, go, goes off the air. I want to thank uh, the 300-plus people we had here this evening. Um, obviously, uh, there were a lot of uh, great people in the chat, as always. Uh, Lito Papa keeping it safe and walking those uh, those uh, those chat streets with a very big big band stick. And obviously, we're keeping the knuckleheads away, and that's thanks to his tireless work. So, big shout out to you, Lethal Mod. Uh, Got to catch up with some of the super chats. Brett Bingham drops an outstanding two dollar super chat and says, "Hit that like button, indeed, please." I was scolded live on the air from Randolph Thor himself. Please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you are enjoying the banter. Why so serious? Drops an outstanding five hours of chat and says, Gran Turismo 7 is so realistic that you actually have to spend big bucks for cars. <laughs> that very true. JC uh, uh, Carl, Carla Moreau drops an outstanding two dollars super chat and says NFT is the metric Sony is using, uh, maybe. And Gamer by Choice drops an outstanding five dollars super chat and says Grant uh, a GTA Online Whale Shark car- cards are fifty dollars and you may be able to get two cars. So Sony's just taking their shot to see if it works. Indeed, and that's true, but. Listen, I don't play that, and I wouldn't spend five dollars, fifty dollars on anything shark cards because I don't play GT, uh, GT, GTA online. But it's here or no there. Mag, let's get you on out here, brother. Please, sure. by all means, tell everyone where they can see your latest skit that dropped today, <laughs> and also where could people, uh, you know, reach out to you and strike up a conversation on social media. Well, guys, I'm going to keep it short and brief. It was a great show as always, and. Uh, the- yeah, chat, you guys are amazing as always and supportive to, of all of us. So it's uh, always welcome to see you guys every single week. And, of course, this panel, always lovely to be on here every single week with all of you guys. Um, and uh, boom for all, all putting the show together. Now, that being said, you can follow any ridiculousness I have on social media, on uh, Twitter. You guys know where I am. The middle-aged game guy. It's with a GY at the end, of course. And uh, if anybody actually knows how to play, like, continuous co-op, in Elden Ring, please somebody let me know. DM me. You tell have me to what the hell's going physically on. cut off your finger, not in Dude, the game. It's ridiculous. I mean, in real life. I actually was able to like summon whatever, and some guy dragged me into some world. We killed some pumpkin head idiot, and then all of a sudden I got dragged back to my world. I'm like, okay, so this isn't like an open world drop in, drop out. You can just roam the, the countryside. No, with your once it, they call you in to complete a certain task. Yes. Right. Once you complete that task, they kick you That's out. That's it. You're out. Yeah. Use and abuse, I say. But anyways, guys, uh, I am the mag, all capitals, of course, on PlayStation and on Xbox. So uh, you guys can find me there. Anyways, guys, I do have to run. It was a wonderful show. We'll see you guys all next week. Yes, absolutely, brother. We'll see you later, brother. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, our guest, uh, Crispy Bomb, by all means, tell everyone where they can reach out to you on social media. But more importantly, what other shows that, that they can listen to you uh, go crazy about Xbox on? <laughs> uh, always a pleasure. Thank you for the invite, Boom. And and shout out to you, gentlemen. Uh, always great conversations with you guys. Uh, at Crispy Bomb on Twitter, Crispy Bomb 28 Xbox Live. 
You can find me on the next podcast, 8 p.m. Thursday. We got Breakfast of Boom, Friday, 10 a.m. Oh, I got a good show lined up for that. That's going to be great. We got Retro Renegades, but I don't know if I'll be there on Tuesday, tomorrow, 7 p.m. I don't think I'll be there. I got to work Wednesday, and that's a rare occurrence, but it is what it is. Wow. Listen, we look forward to hearing you, what you have to say on your two shows, one of which is Breakfast with Boom. We'll get to that Friday morning. Let's get uh, let's get uh, Kay Asante and Everborn Saga on out here. Kay Asante, by all means, sell your wares, brother. Tell everyone where they can check out the Gaming Circle podcast on Friday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And where can people reach out to you on social media? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me as, as usual. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, this Elden Ring conversation is going to go on for quite some time. I, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, you can find me, TKO Asante, on Twitter, Xbox, PlayStation, and all those, those places that we like to talk gaming and play gaming. Uh, the Gaming Circle podcast is Saturdays, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Last week, we had Thai Talks on there. We had a really great conversation about Elden Ring and, and Halo. And Didn't Mr. Joanna stuff. Dark wind up jumping in as well? No, no, no. It was, <laughs> that's the thing about this show, right? Sometimes you think you think Slowmo's in there. Sometimes you think Mr. Joanna Dark's in there because they're all like constantly in the chat, you know, and we, we, we communicate with them and whatnot. He was not on the show, but he's been on the show previously. I'm sure yeah. we'll get him back on there again soon but yeah we have a lot of fun on saturdays so please join us myself and the mr everborn saga and hopefully soon we will be bringing on the reel back as well i know the ball's in my court there everborn calm yourself i have Waiting a lot on of you to see to the batman i have a lot of moving to do i'm doing my best to try and get it done i was going to do it this uh, today but there is no eight o'clock showing so I'm, I'm kind of sol but yes thank <laughs> you all for coming to check out the show as you always do always supporting us in, in all our various different uh, podcasting ventures we thank you guys so much for for continued support and we will see y'all next week thank you and last and no way least everborn saga please by all means tell me about the show that's gonna be making a big comeback uh and uh where can people reach out to you and potentially strike up a conversation and even get into an argument because i saw you fighting with these people on the socials stay out of those spaces I know. Well, I, I've been keeping it to movie spaces, but uh, On The Real will be back after K. Asante sees the Batman. I'm trying to change the, the show format around a little bit. Okay. I want it to be less less about news and more about uh, in-depth conversations about specific uh, pieces of art. So uh, I want to bring it back with the Batman and we can have a long-form discussion about that. Nice. Um, and the more important thing is... Look what I got. Uh-oh. Nice. The prints have come in. So if you supported the Kickstarter campaign, we are beginning to send out books this week. Nice. Now we're still waiting on the hardcovers, but if you're if your uh if your reward uh just included this without any uh Prince of Arcadia, these are gonna start going out this week. So you should start getting them in the mail very soon. Nice. Um, other than that, Everborn Saga everywhere and check out everbornsaga.com very soon because we, if you miss this Kickstarter campaign, that book is going to go live uh, on the website and you can uh, order the Redlands Chapter 1. And again, more to come soon. And now it's just back to the grind in Elden Ring. Nice. That's well, listen, everyone's going to be talking Elden Ring, I think, for quite some time. At least you for can't bring up three. Elden Ring without going for another 45 minutes. It's crazy. Dude, it's every it's time. always, uh, yeah, you always want to go around the corner. Uh, definitely sa- save this dude, find this guy and, and, and hit him out. There you go. See, because he's going to come back to, uh, much later in the game to potentially help you. I saved and, him yesterday. Nice, nice. <laughs> yes, excellent. Well, listen, folks, thank you so much for being here. Of course, thank you. A big shout out to the super chats that continue to come in. And of course, uh, if you want to you want to show your support in other ways, you can become a channel member. Simply go to the web page, which is known on YouTube as Double Barrel Gaming, and hit the Join button. You can join for $5 a month or $10 a month, either one. And uh, you're helping us uh, you know, offer many, many giveaways, which we're going to start doing as the summer months and holiday months start to go through in 2022 like we did last year and of course i'm going to close out the show with something that's important to me folks hopefully one day i'll be important to you and that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids and he said son treat others how you want to be treated and also it doesn't cost anything to be nice you live by those rules and i can guarantee you you're gonna have an awesome day so take care everyone and we'll see you next week on the newest episode of primetime gaming 
with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. 